such a uh, such an amazing baseline. I I I will forever love the Mega Drive era for its insanely cool baselines. It's so it's so neat. It's so cool. Love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, oh boy, strap yourselves in, people. We are we are in for a bit of a ride. Uh, but first, the daily announcement of me going three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the B&A stream today on this fine 4th of March 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been, um, <laughs> lots of stuff has happened in the personal, uh, not the personal life, but the, the domestic life. The, uh, the house and the living arrangements around me. Um, so that's, greetings blub, how's everything going? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's not bad and it's not like, uh, you know, like, um, I have a disruptive scenario. It's it's disruptive during the uh, <laughs> during the day, but when it when it comes to stream time, it's fine. Don't worry, we're, we're all good. Uh, let me boot up the game, and we can dive into things. Full Monday ahead of you. Ooh, well, a full Monday. Hold on, I got some sound. A full Monday means you got a lot of stuff to do. And a lot of stuff to do means lots of exciting opportunities and also re commitments and re you know responsibilities, but things that can happen, which is great. And a good start, yeah, a good start's always good. That's that's what I hope out of a Monday stream is pretty much everyone is like, yeah, you know, kickstart your week with something cool, something awesome, and something to think about. I don't know. Sometimes the things that I bring up to think about aren't very, uh, you know. Well, I don't, I don't know. It depends. There's some cool things. Like, uh, I saw in, um, there was a level 1 text video about, uh, this, uh, Solodyne SSD. And it's not too, like, it doesn't read or write particularly fast, but the latency is really low, and it has an insane write endurance. So it's sort of like an Optane success. I don't know. Uh, tech always interests me. I love tech. Um, I, I'm gonna have to strap people in because uh, I have uh, real politics, not real politics, real politics is like politicians, um, <laughs> so I don't have actual real politics, but uh, um, there's a, there's an internet drama, I love this egg, it's just here, it's just, it's just chilling right here, um, uh, so, uh, so I think uh, I, I might as well dive into it, um, or do I? No, 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 no. We, we can leave the YouTube ad money a bit, a bit clean. So let's talk about uh, the technical thing. Uh, I have bit, well, not bit the bullet, but I've decided to yeet the Xbox controller out uh, for the time being. And I'm toying around with for the past few days, um, particularly two controllers, but particularly one of those two controllers. Uh, I got me an 8 bit Doe Ultimate. Uh, controller and an 8-bit Doe Pro 2. I just got wired versions. They were both about 40 Australian bucks on Amazon. Um, I don't think the ultimate is as cheap, but uh, the Pro 2 still kind of is. And uh, I think the only thing you lose out from it being wired, apart from obviously the wireless capability, is the Pro 2... Actually, no, I think the ultimate has like a gyro functionality in the wireless version only. So I can't leverage that right now. And maybe it would have been neat to leverage that. Oh, we got another egg thief. How many egg thieves have been in this game? I think this is like the third one. You got to grab his egg though. It's great. Well, I mean, you have to. That's what the game's like. Um, but yeah, I tried the ultimate out for a bit. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like a regular Xbox layout. The triggers are a bit like thicker on it. Um, but other than that, it's very, it is very Xbox controller. I do like the D-pad. It's very much, it reminds me of a, I think a SNES controller is kind of like that. Um, and it's a good feeling. I like the feeling. It's a bit stiff, like it should. I shouldn't be accidentally hitting directions. It's a little, maybe it's a little too stiff on the diagonals, but I prefer it being too stiff than not stiff at all. I keep accidentally hitting the wrong things. Um... The, the sticks feel pretty alright. Uh, the, um... The, well, I thought I had some background feedback from that. Sticks feel alright. The rumble is a little weaker than I expected, but it's, it's pretty okay at the end of the day. And, uh... You can obviously rebind all... Oh, it's got some back paddles, which I was surprised that they weren't actually in the way very much. So underneath your... your I guess, if you're holding a controller, it would be right underneath your middle fingers as you're gripping the wings. Um, that's where the back paddles... Uh, kind of sit. 
And they're, they're pretty... Yeah. They're pretty alright. Also, I love the freaking... I, I have not... <laughs> I haven't addressed it. The... <laughs> that that synth is so hilariously aggressive. I love it. There's a lot of like weird little nooks and crannies in this uh, map as well. Ooh, we are. <laughs> that's uh, that's the one. We're at 117x. Jeez. Um, but yeah, the the ultimate I can't give as strong an opinion on though because I was like, okay, I want to try out the Pro 2 a bit. So I tried the ultimate for some uh, regular games. I was playing the Talos Principle 2 and Grid Legends a bit. So some first person. It's not a shooter, but I'm still navigating around in first person and a driving game. I then swapped over to the Pro 2 to play some uh, retro games. So I actually played through Atlantis on the PS1. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I might play it later. Um, also, this is where the end of the game is, and you can see you needed 100 eggs. To which you did uh, it, Spiral. You found enough I've done of the dragon it. eggs for me to unlock the portal. Once I've opened it, you can confront the sorceress whenever you're ready. But be careful. She'll be expecting you. That's usually how it works. <laughs> Very explosive door open. Just like the Ripto door. Well, actually, unlike the Ripto door, you don't have to go into it a little bit. He had some gems on his way. Uh, so anyway, so I switched over to the Pro 2. Now, the Pro 2's layout is a lot more like the DualShock layout. Both of the sticks are at the bottom, as opposed to the left side ones at the top. Um, the tr back triggers are even larger. Also, it says L2 and R2 on my I guess. Uh, and the face buttons are also... Although the PlayStation colors, but they're like wrong. Like the bottom one is circle, the right one is green, the top one is uh, pink, purple, and the left one is X. So it's like 90 degrees rotated. Also, it's ABXY in the Nintendo layout, so I don't know what they're quite going for. Uh, it's still got back pedals, back paddles. Um, this controller has been, it's been a while since I've held a controller that's just fit. This controller fits so insanely well. Like, I don't know what they've done or how they've exactly done it, but like, this is like my hand shape with wings. This works so well. And I've actually been going back and then playing Grid Legends and other kinds of games with this because I'm really loving the feel of this controller. I'm using it right now, so we'll see. I'll, I'll judge at the end of a at the end of a session um, how well the uh, the Pro 2 controller is. Uh, but yeah, given that price for the wired version, at least not the wireless version. Um, like I'm really loving it. I love the the gray look. It's still got the kind of grippiness of the the back. I this ledge, by the way, is uh, interesting because if you glide over to it, oh, what's this? This is your Dragon Shores, you know, you need everything. 15,000 gems, by the way, which, uh, we ain't got. And, uh, even if we go to this screen, you'll see... I mean, we're close. We're close. If we go to the, uh, do we get a total on this screen? On this screen? Yeah, there you go, there's a total. We're still a bit off, because there's lots more gems. But the number of eggs will still happen. We're almost there. And we're going to do it this stream, by the way. This is going to be the, the final Spyro 3 stream. And then we're done with the... I guess the good Spyro games. Uh, there are still some gems on this level. I'm trying to pick off the top of my brain where they are, because we've seen- Oh, there's one. But I guess there's another yellow somewhere. Chillin'. Sparks, where are they at? That way. No question on how to- how to pull off the L1, R1, L2, R2. Oh, back here? I'm manipulating the ca- oh, cheeky. I'm manipulating the camera like a boss, doing all the good stuff. Uh, we're gonna do these levels in just whatever order. Uh, so let's start off with the Haunted Tomb. Uh, but yeah. I feel like these levels are tougher, but then I'm probably gonna like breeze through them, I don't know. Or that's, you know, famous final words. And you pick up a gem right off the bat, very nice. Ah, yet another daredevil adventurer has come to rob our catacombs of loot. This guy Let's reminds me of a genie who threw bombs at me once. The last guy. If you can survive okay. the trials of our catacombs and answer my riddle, we will give you a prize befitting your efforts. Okay, sure. Here is my riddle. I am a vessel without hinges, lock or lid. Yet 
Within my walls, a golden treasure is hid. What am I? So we, uh, prompts you. Uh, this level is, uh, privy to respawning enemies. You'll see these, uh... Oh, these, these things will keep... What are they? Sarcophagi? That's a plural sarcophagus, right? Sarcophagi? Yeah. Uh, they'll keep spawning these, uh, these dudes, which, uh... Not too bad, but they're a bit tall. Uh, I believe... You need something... I actually do need something later. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll figure it out, because we need to. Also, the, uh, the not-quite-earth shapers of- oh, here we go. The perfect thing I need. They'll throw, uh, these rocks at you. The rocks, uh, you can eat, and I'm pretty sure you can- Well, we can't go back there, so never mind. Uh, but you can use these to blow up the- the sarcophagi, which is what you would need. Also, diamond dogs. You know, from David Bowie. And, uh, obviously, as well, take these and spit it back at them, and, uh, they are very dead. Also, the pro people will want to swim in here. For a skill point. That's, that's just a skill point. There are three more left. Uh, and we'll be getting those this stream. And then we're good, because, I mean, it's the last stream. I gotta, gotta finish things. I love the way they just blow up. It's insane. Um, but yeah, uh, 8 Doha are not sponsoring me, by the way. I just literally bought these controllers because I like the M30. It's not quite the controller for me, but I get why, because it is a decently, like, faithful-ish Mega Drive-shaped controller. It's even got the D-pad that kind of feels like it. Um, so I just went with these because I'm like, you know what, they might be alright. And, uh, yeah, no, I, the Pro 2, I'm loving it. The Ultimate is good. But I'll give the, the ultimate a bit better of a go, and uh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll gauge, we'll judge. There we go. Oh, you know what? Actually, I could go backwards, because I assume that's what these are. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to need one of these. They don't blow up in your mouth, at least. But I'm pretty sure you just go backwards like this. <laughs> probably going to probably gonna need to remind myself that, yes, yes, you can go backwards. What is that, then? <laughs> Come on, I pressed that before, did I not? Because I know all these psychopathic guys are going to drop gems, because, I mean, it's defeating an enemy, so... It's not too bad, though. Other than, yes, we will need 700 gems in this level, and each of the levels going forward. This level's cool, though. I don't... oops. Nice. This level's cool though. I like the like the return of the earth shape is somewhat. And also, also I guess high high counts of gems. Always nice. Um, but yeah, I'm curious as well. Is is a mild engagement challenge if anyone's watching in whatever year you're watching. Uh, what controller do you daily? Does your controller not exist as of the time of recording? Because that'd be kind of cool if uh, you know they keep making them better. I feel like there's part of me that's, um, because I guess this Pro 2 is very much, like, the, the, the torso of the body is very much, like, SNES size, SNES shaped. But, it's got wings. It's got, sort of, PlayStation level wings. Oh, I should have got the, the thing I could spat out. I'm gonna need a backpedal for that. Oh man, I gotta go a fair bit until we get to the next Earth Shaper. There you go. Go chuck one at me and then I can only start taking these things out. Yeet! Uh... Yeah. And uh, as for the fate of the Xbox controller... Well, we'll see. My favorite control so far remains the Pro Controller for the Switch. I, I think as well, like, the best part is that there's not a lot of, like, wrong answers, because everyone's hands are different. Oh, oh they're dropping, dropping bombs anyways. I keep, keep on forgetting the words I wrote down. I can understand the feeling of just like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's such a good feeling, and, and, yeah, there's no, there's no wrong answers. The Switch Pro Controller I like, except for the D-pad. I, like, I don't particularly like being able to hit the different directions so easily. Um, 
like particularly hitting diagonals when I don't really mean to. Um, uh, I guess one advantage out of both of these 8 bit Doe controllers is that uh, even though they are the, both wired versions, they're also both Switch compatible, which is very nice. Um, so uh, when that eventual point that I play Mario Wonder, I think I wrote, I told someone that I was going to play Mario Galaxy, and I. That's, that's not quite correct. Oh, come on. Do you like this extra hit that Sparks casually has, by the way? In some other games he turns red, but in this he's just yellow twice. There we go. There you go, I'm not missing out on these sarcophagi. Uh, wherever the button keeps going, I keep forgetting. Um, but yeah, there's no wrong answer for your favorite controller, and I think that's one of the best parts about um, modern controller design, is that We've sort of hit this, like, convergence point where everyone's controllers sort of do all kind of need to do the same thing. Uh, even if Nintendo has tried and they've got things like the Wii Remote and the, you know, the Wii U gamepad really trying to, you know, change things up and add new functionality, uh, the Switch is certainly a concession. The Switch controller does not do anything that no other controller does, except for maybe, I guess, NFC and the... And the bit and the the HD rumble, which I believe the PlayStation has its own stuff, and obviously ni neither of these controllers, the rumble is going to compete with uh, the clarity that I guess you get out of a, a Switch Pro controller or Joy Cons. Um, but hopefully, if they don't Joy Con drift, then you know I think I guess that's a trade off I'm willing to accept because uh, yeah, I've gone through two two Joy Cons that have drifted over the years, and I, I swear I've never gone through first party controllers like this before. I, like, I still have my GameCube controllers and my PS2 controllers that are like... Grant, my PS2 controllers have aged. The, the back R2 and L2 buttons get stuck. Uh, I think they've certainly... They've, they've seen better days. But, uh... Like, my PS1 controllers still work very nice. Um, the, uh... Like, I've got, yeah, GameCube controllers and even my old, like, uh... Not the Duke, I have the, the Xbox... S shape controller, which was slightly better on the uh, on the hands. That controller is still like I I feel like I've got big hands, and that still feels massive to me. I I don't understand Microsoft's design there, but sure. Um, let's go through a nice little portal, shall we? Into a little side area. I think you all will hate me doing this bit because the first it's, round of know, the annual hard. demolition hovercraft competition is about to begin. There is room oh, for the more ADHC. But you'll have to answer a riddle to qualify. What? The riddle is this. If one dragon can lay one egg in twelve years, how long would it take for one hundred dragons to lay one hundred eggs? This is the classic, like, if I drive at 60 kilometers per hour, how many kilometers do I drive in an hour? Oh, I am terribly Which I, I, I get wrong because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, the riddle is this. If one you, dragon again. can lay one egg in 12 years, how long would it take for 100 dragons to lay 100 eggs? Oh, it's 12 years. Whoops, whoops. I put the Very 100 in there. Oh, no. That is correct. Good luck in the demolition hovercraft competition. I'm gonna, I'm gonna complain about my sister. I caught her out with one of these as well. It's a, it's a, I think I mentioned it like a couple of streams ago. I was watching the 12 hour bathers and I said this, the race starts at 5.45 AM. It goes to 12 hours. When does it end? And she's trying to calculate. 12 hours after 5.45 a.m. And I'm like, just, just, just say 5.45 p.m. It's 12 hours. So what, what is Hovercraft? Well, it's a completely different gameplay paradigm. Uh, you could strafe with L1 and R1, and you can turn. And you gotta master the ability to strafe. Please accept this prize for winning the first round. The first round. And you get an egg. So very nice. Come on, he's gonna do it. No. This is not Michael Jackson. This is a. You may now enter the <laughs> That's a, that's round. Mary Mary Jane However, from from Spider Man. This is an exceedingly dangerous sport. Might a I dangerous sport. While you're still in one piece. 
Bring my, it on. My, such a brave reptile you are. But you'll need much more than bravery to win the championship. Uh, you can also do these lob shots, but you're not aiming up and down. It just it just does the do. Uh, uh, these guys are also kind of iffy because they're gonna like circle behind these pots, and they're gonna do these like reverse like sliding. They're gonna they're gonna do this fancy stuff, especially as well the people who are across the gap here. Because ultimately you're relying on your own health and you're going to cop it. Uh, Max's mother has three sons. Insert the first two names of Donald Duck's nephews. Round. Was it Huey, Dewey, and Louie? That's it. With the placeholder because they have different names sport. according to the language. Ah, oh, okay. Might I suggest you quit while you're still in one piece. My, but who is Max? My. Max's mother has Such three. Oh, oh, because Max is the third one. Whoops. But you'll need <laughs> yes. much more than there you go. There you go. <laughs> the the trick is to to always like read the question for the red herring because a lot of these. I mean, that's what makes it a riddle. That's what makes riddles fun. Is that it's all about just like reading outside the lines. Uh, that, that was always a classic one I remember, which is like. You were a pilot for like an aircraft. The aircraft houses 500, uh, 500. No, no, no. We'll do it for a bus. You're a bus driver. The bus uh, houses 50 people uh, at or tops at the first stop. No, no one's on the bus at first, and then 20 people get on. At the second stop, three people get off, and 14 get on. At the third stop, uh, 15 people get off, and two people get on. What color is the bus driver's eyes? <laughs> that's that's like another one. <laughs> oh, did he just kill himself? There? Oh, come on. Because now I'm out of hits. This one's kind of tricky. This, this one is very tricky. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely attest to this one. Um, oh, it's Dragon's Dogma 2 also going to do the same thing. Oh, boy. Also, trick, tick, trick, and trap in German. Very nice. They do have a butterfly over there. Can I get the butterfly without... Nope. Nope. We'll give it another go. We'll give it another go. You may now... You may now enter. Thank you. It's because I'm going aggressively, and I'm not, I'm not like, paying full attention, so. But yeah, you just gotta kinda, like, get your shot, and then basically slide around. So that, like, the guy moves into the, the line of fire. Like that, for example. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna try and shoot you from over there. Mmm, very tricky. It is kind of weird as well, because you do move around with the stick, so like you sort of have reversing, but you are turning still. It's a bit curious. It is a bit curious, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I'm, I'm on a roll right now. I haven't gotten hit, which means I'll probably take 50 million shots and die, but we'll get there. Uh, so I don't know, we're 23 minutes in. Do I mention the politics now? Uh, I guess we will. This is... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, so, some people will will uh, find the, the words Gamergate polarizing and stuff like that. I feel like actually 10 years ago when it happened, I think I actually did mention some of it on, on not stream, uh, I do not believe in dragon supremacy. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> they got wings and legs. That's more than me. Well, I, I mean, I've got legs, I think. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Just, just get in there. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> that was um, indeed a battle for the ages. You're the first dragon to win. Also, the if cats have nine lives, how many lives do dragons have? Dragons years. basically have infinite lives. They I don't have thumbs. That is true. Present you this year's grand prize. The grand prize. This is another egg. Oh, but it's TJ Tycho Jackson. Very nice. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why dogs. Oh my gosh, the, that didn't come back. I just didn't blow it up. Nice yes, sign. That's what. It was. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gamergate is a thing from ten years ago, and uh, depending on who you ask, that will give you a very, very different answer about what it is. For me, pretty much, it is. Uh, it is the point. Well, maybe not the point, but sort of a, a, like, ah, okay, point of why I was sort of falling out with, uh, connecting with games journalism and 
the things that they were saying were exciting didn't really seem that exciting to me. Uh, and eventually I found out that there's conflicts of interest going on. There's a certain, a very, very particular case where a certain journalist uh, had a relationship with a certain person who they promoted positively. Now, let's find uh, quick as your feet. Do you remember okay. the riddle? Not at all. I am a vessel without hinges, lock or lid. Yet within my walls, a golden treasure is hid. What am I? I appreciate a bandicoot right here, but you could probably you could probably tell what it is. Mm. Egg. Have you heard that one before? I never thought you'd get it. Very well. A bargain is a bargain. You may have the dragon egg that I was guarding from the sorceress. Dude, that sorceress wasn't gonna do a good job anyways. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, what, what ended up happening in... Oh, hold on. 7,000 years for someone to solve that riddle. Now, I can finally head off to Seashell Shore to bury some bones. Oh, okay. Okay. And there he goes. He's off. He's gone. Uh, we got so many side areas as well. Look at this. One of those Hi guys there. with funny hats put a curse on me just because I shot him in the butt a couple of times. <laughs> he said he turned my tail into a snake. Does it look like a snake to you? It does feel kind of funny. Come to think of it, oh boy, that dog's gonna pay. Okay, sure. Hi there. Behind this door lie the five deadly trials of King Rover. No King one Rover. has ever survived all five. In fact, it is so dangerous that I cannot let you through this first door unless you are able to solve my riddle. Oh Here's boy. the riddle. I follow you wherever you go. But the more of me you take, the more you leave behind. A giant lizard. My, my. You're quite clever for someone with so little fashion sense. You may proceed Whip. to the first trial. Okay. Uh, pretty much, uh, you got a combat gauntlet. Good luck and uh, remember to strafe. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, interpretations. Some people will definitely, oh my gosh, this is what I get. Uh, some people will definitely say that, uh, Gamergate was actually about a, uh, well, I guess a harassment of women campaign. Uh, to that I would then say, uh, maybe there were people who co-opted the name, but it certainly wasn't that in the first week, I'll tell you that. And I think that first week is probably, you know... The important thing is, at that point in time, this was the only thing being mentioned, and uh, certain journalist publications who were either friends with this journalist or uh, actually employed the journalist proceeded to never say anything, and no one apologized or really, like, just said, yeah, you know, we'll make things clearer until, like, years down the line. When they started saying, okay, we'll, we'll describe who, uh, you know, if, if the writer is Patreon backing someone, which is like, a start, but it's like, I feel like the actual relationship is sort of more. Uh, and bonus points, like, I, I'd be less upset if uh, the actual publication, or if the actual writing I still agreed with, I guess. Um, but yeah, not in that case, I don't know. I played Depression Quest, I was like, this is just a bit of an anti-game. And a little bit of... Uh, mean-spirited at times? You could say maybe that's the point, but I don't know. Uh, that is Gamergate as a, as a catch-up. Uh, we are now in... Oh, and also there was this... Uh, I, I mentioned so Depression Quest is a game by a character of Zoe Quinn. There are certainly uh, character attacks on her. I'm not saying, you know, the criticism is wrong. How do I phrase it? You can criticize her, but she technically isn't really the story. She, it's more that she's had a relationship with multiple people who are, you know, influential in games medium and games development, and uh, no one, no one really, you know, wanted to admit that that was the case. So she's more at the center of things and not exactly the actual 
problem herself. Although maybe, you know, maybe she could also help de-escalate the issue. Look at all these earth shapers and stuff. You can't even deal with them. You gotta, I believe you gotta um, throw back their bombs like grenades once they take them down. And yeah, all these snakes keep respawning. That's why the counter keeps going down. Uh, so you gotta go around, make sure you take out the, the jars. All good. Uh, so anyway, so introduced today, uh, there's a, uh, well not today, but a, a, a week ago, um, I, well, not even just a week ago, actually a month ago, let's say, let's say a month ago, uh, on my, uh, February 5th, uh, stream at the end of the, the Quake 2 run, uh, here we go, nice, I'm glad I took that hit, come on, uh, at the end of uh, that stream, uh, not at the end, at about 1 hour 17 on the stream, I mentioned, uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Sweet Baby Inc. is a company that is, uh, effectively marketed as DEI. It's Diversity, uh, Equity? And Inclusion? I think that's the term. Uh, as, as I mentioned on that stream, and my opinions have not changed at all, uh, some people believe that, you know, seeing those terms is a bit of... You know, it is a bit of kryptonite, and I was using that as a pun around the Suicide Squad game, which I hope people appreciate. Um, Eggity! Roxy, you don't have to put on the red light! Oh, I could have mentioned Roxy music as well, that would have worked. Um, but uh, I, I mentioned Sweet Baby Inc. We are... We now have a Steam group that actually existed the week before, but I don't think it's really picked up until a bit of Streisand effect. Also, I love just this. We've got a secret slide moment. Gonna make sure you pick up some gems. And also, <laughs> it goes so fast if you want to. But if you make it to the end, well, it was in the middle of the map. People think Frankie Muniz doesn't have his memory, which is completely untrue, by the way. He's clarified, it's like, no, no, I've got my memory. I'm just saying that, like, stuff happened 20 years ago and I just don't remember it. Like, <laughs> like, you asked me what I had for breakfast. Slides are also something. Yes, I do miss slides. We need more slides. We need more, like, power-ups. Like, just fun power-ups. And, uh, we need more, like, uh, what's, a, what's another one? More vibes in the music. Lots of games don't go overboard in the music. Very prevalent in the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, like, which one actually was the most influential game with slides. Mario 64 definitely was a big one, but is there one from earlier? Superman 64, of course. <laughs> well, that's rides, not slides. Alright, let's over the, head over to this one, the Crystal Islands. That'd be a fun one. Let's let's try and figure out like what game has slides. Cause there, I mean, there are slide levels. Does does uh does the Battle Toads Turbo Tunnel count as a slide level? Shh. Spiral. Arguably. Don't tell anyone. But we've Harry Potter three on PC. Ah, oh, dude. We'll get to that. We might get to that one at some point. It. Unfortunately, we've had a bit of an accident and turned everything into crystal, and it it seems to have aggravated the indigenous creatures. Well, I'd be upset if we turn me into crystal. Oh, I just like pea sapphires now. Also, there's this wonderful sample in the music, and it's constant. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Oh, Galaxy 2 has some great slide levels. <laughs> Sonic Lost World. <laughs> we have the return of the underwater pools and the, uh, the wonderful spinning octopi. The giant tree slide in World 1 or 2. I think it was World 2, but yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Freaking flying beavers. They're so good. Yeah, this, this actually gives me a very, like, Spyro 1 vibe, the level. But then all the enemies give me a very Spyro 2 vibe. I don't know. Uh, so, so anyway, so a couple of uh, weeks ago, or a handful of weeks ago, around January 29, someone made a Steam group titled Steam Baby, sorry Steam, uh, Sweet Baby Ink Detector. Uh, this, this group is basically just going around saying negative, don't recommend games that have had Sweet Baby Ink uh, involvement. And there are more games than they can actually say on Steam because they worked on Spider-Man 2, uh, which is only on the PS5. Uh, and there's probably some other games that as well they can't really list because 
not on Steam. But for the ones that they have, which is about a dozen, uh, including that Suicide Squad game and uh, or Spoken and uh, let me, uh, try and recall another one. Just, I think the Crew Motorfest is not on Steam, and Alan Wake 2 is not on Steam. That's also the Crew Motorfest. Like I'm just saying, you know, like for all intents and purposes, if people are upset about like the poor writing that these Would people like have contributed. I'm like, man, no racing game in the past like five years has good dialogue. See, there is nothing up my it's not a these people thing. Nothing this is a right game writers in general now, right now do not know how to make a good driving game. Word, uh, except for F1, uh, 21. No, I, I will, I will give F1, 21 a free pass because I like the, the Netflix style forced drama in their story. But it's because they made every character actually, like, a bit unlikable. And the whole point is that they figure out that they're all unlikable. And that they're just trying to get through this, like, forced controversy. And I like that premise. I like that. But yeah, like, the new Need for Speed, um, I forgot the name of it, but it's like, a lot of people find the writing in that, like, unbearable. Don't play racing games, so my claim is pure prejudice. To, to be fair, you are mostly right. I get I got so sick of Forza Horizon being like like it's it's one of like three things. It's either, whoa, you know, like look at these cool, you know, sceneries, which is like, I don't know, it's like oh, you also you gotta talk to this again? guy to keep making the platforms. Well, alright. But I want you to know this isn't as easy as it looks. <clears throat> Alakazam! Are you allowed to say Alakazam? Is that, was that like under dispute at this time? Um, they, they, I'm trying to recall, like, what, what is like the King Tier good racing game dialogue? I'd probably say Toka Race Driver 1 all this might be alright. just misdirection, you know. Which is why I'm going to start that whirlwind over there. Abra Kadabra. I don't know over here, bro. Um, Toko Race Driver 1's fun because, uh, every time you, like, if you hit someone a little bit too much in a race, there'll be a cutscene afterwards of them basically, like, pinning you against the wall afterwards going, Bro, what the heck, you nearly killed me! Like, that kind of stuff. Like, just chastising you for your terrible driving. Uh, which I think is, is kind of funny. Um... I'm trying to recall, like, there's gotta be another one. I'm playing through Juiced, and Juiced is, uh... A little bit hilarious. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So Forza is either, whoa, look at this cool scenery, or whoa, did you just do that like fun stunt that we just laid out right in front of you along this corridor? There's always that. And the occasional, like, we're doing underground street racing, but don't worry, we still use our seat belts and helmets and we try to be perfectly safe. There's a lot of that. And I'm like, bro, just, you know, just tell me about cool machinery and call it there. <laughs> we don't have to sugarcoat. That I'm just playing a video game at the end of the day. Okay, I'll show you again. Or give me some uh, good uh, good pieces of racing history. That's done. always good. Abracadabra. Dab. Um, it's kind of annoying to keep going back to these people after they've activated the, the power ups. It's not too long a level though. It's the it's the usual affair of it's a ring. Hi there, money bags. I haven't seen you in a, a week, I guess. Uh, it's Abracadabra Simsala Bim, by the way, in German. Ooh, Simsala Bim. Spyro, did you know I happen to be a very talented amateur magician? My specialty is the uh, amazing extending bridge trick. I'd love to show you, but I need a small donation first for my expenses, you understand. For my next magic trick, I shall make your wallet lighter. A thousand gems! Oh my gosh! Remember, it was 15,000 total in the game. <laughs> Not Very again! Good. Uh, let's see... Hocus pocus ziggledy zen, make this bridge get long again! Are you telling me it was long before? Some salabim. Some salabim. Very nice. <laughs> I've Hi been there. working on a great new magic trick, but this bear keeps spoiling it. Okay, I'll get rid of the bear, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Moral of the story is, uh, Sweet Baby Inc. have worked on a few things. Uh, this Steam group, uh, Steam Curator, is basically just going, Yeah, anything that they've worked on, we're saying not recommended. 
Uh, to now, I shall now bring to light some very particular Twitter users. And usually, a random Twitter user is not anything of note. Like, if, if someone says something stupid on Twitter, it's just like, it's a regular day. But this is very important. We have a uh, Twitter user by the name of at Lego Butts. Uh, at Lego Butts has said, and I shall read in full because I think it is worth describing exactly what they said. I get to, and, and to be honest, they're also hitting on two points here, so I'll, I'll touch on their other point. Uh, they said, I get to see a lot of tweets somehow blaming diversity as the reason for layoffs, genuinely as if the economy was doing really great and capitalism simply worked before Miles Morales was Spider-Man. Asterisk, they also don't recognize Miles as Spider-Man. We're already off to a start where they've, they've, me. Like, it's just like, you're not speaking to those people, apparently. Well, I suppose um, I could show you my new trick. Oh. As long as you promise not to tell the great Zamboni, he steals all my best work. Alakazam! The Amy Schumer of magicians. <laughs> or the Thomas Edison, if you want to go vintage. Although, did Tom Thomas Edison was like... Just kind of repackaged the light bulb Here, in a you consumable form, which is to use it in a, trick, but my a bit of value, but he, it's not the light bulb. It's just, well, unless he trademarked the term light bulb and that was it, in which case, oh, okay. He didn't invent filament, we'll say that. Um, so anyway, continuing on, the weirdest part is when I see these takes from developers, or people who have dev bios at least. I don't know, it seems wild that a dev would see thousands of layoffs and blame not the industry giants, but instead a 15-person narrative company founded by a black woman. Now, I, I assume they're referring to Sweet Baby Inc. themselves uh, in this case. These people think of a company of narrative designers that freelances on projects has somehow single-handedly caused the employment collapse in games instead of, you know, the insane notion of infinite growth or capitalist greed. It's easier to blame diversity than, some, uh, than that somehow. Uh, also, another slide! Two levels in a row with a slide. Amazing. Uh, these people think... Uh, oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, oops. I read the same line again. And I am sliding off. So, okay. Next tweet. I still think it's more likely that they just... Uh, they, know, they know that's not the case. And they're just fine with looking stupid. As long as it justifies them being loudly anti-woke. Whatever that means. It's rainbow as well. So this is almost the rainbow road. Does the rainbow road count as a slide level? You're technically driving in a car. But it's very slide-esque. It's aesthetically very much like a slide. It's got corners, it's got bits, but... I love as well that there's no other point in the game other than these two sections which have slides. But it's just like right at the end, you gotta throw them in. It starts and stops. based on it. Mm, I think the Rainbow Road, no, the Rainbow Road is um, just uh, in a uh, Super Mario Kart. Oh, uh, yeah, if I miss gems, just, I'll, I'll do another one. The past, like, four times I've played this game, I've always missed a gem, just somewhere along that path. Also, hi there, egg. There you go. <laughs> hey, Louise. S <laughs> so slow and careful. I'll do another run. I'll do another run. Because this just puts you back at the top. They're not... They're not anywhere too unknown. Uh, so anyway, so... Uh, also, they put in brackets, we all know what it means about... Uh, being loudly anti-woke, whatever that means. Uh, the other part of this that just doesn't matter if you tell them the... Tr uh, it doesn't matter if you tell them the truth. They think DEI just stops... Uh, just steps in and changes whole games that creators are forced by some unseen hand. The government? BlackRock, I guess? As well as just POC in general, to make games more inclusive? This is a... Uh... Oh yeah, you're right, I did miss one. I love how Sparks has the increased range and he still just misses stuff like that. Uh, fighting misinformation... Oh, oh. I mean, we're good, we're good, I can, I can exit out the top. <laughs> fighting misinformation would be great, but social media and YouTube is not equipped to hold people accountable to doing real research in good faith. Just getting hits and proving their point in the absence of confirmation. It's wild out there. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Sorry, no one thing has changed. The number of people who understand that spreading misinformation just lets them be racist in public with no consequence has increased dramatically. That has changed. Probably requires some fighting from those with authority. Probably. 
For example, at Steam doesn't have guidelines for curators as far as I can tell that will prevent someone from starting a curation group uh, oh my gosh, we need a chest with a key. Starting a curation group that focuses on, say, at Sweet Baby Inc. and warns people to not buy games they're associated with, which could just list any game at all, which is like, uh... I mean, maybe. Th that's the whole point of, like, Steam Good curators. Good evening, uh, Spyro! The amazing Randini is about to put on a display of prestidigitation. I've heard that it's ooh, quite what a impressive, word. so I'm going to watch the show. Okay. And there he goes. Uh, we got the, the fun puzzle block pushing as well. It seemed right in the war they picked wrong in the battle. Yeah, like, I'm not... I'm not 100%... Like, I'm not actually... Well, yeah, if, if we take back the instance, I totally do, like, get the criticisms, but yeah, it's like, where are the fights, and also, how meaningful are the f I, I love, you know, we're saying fights and war and battle, it's like, oh my gosh, it's very, very aggressive for what it is. Overexcited the moles. They need a good bonk on the head to calm them down, and you look like just the man to help. Uh, so anyway, two tweets left, uh, which listen, I'm not sure who uses curator lists. My guess it's people who would never ever buy the games any of us work on, except they do, and don't list those particular games here. But there's just nothing preventing this from even though it's clearly not what curators are for. It's doubled in followers overnight, the day after, and we get to see exactly what people are describing it as. A way to avoid inclusivity. They're just saying it, and there's no one challenging them. That isn't a complaint. It's just a fact, and I can't stay quiet about it, nor should I have to. And then they said they have to charge their phone, and I'm pretty sure nothing else they've said is particularly significant in this uh, conversation. But there was a big thread pointing out at the end that there's this group, and it sort of was the the context at the beginning. Do you remember the 60 FPS check? Yeah, the 60 FPS check is totally like another, yeah, like meaningful one. It's like people have very simple criteria, really, for like what kinds of things that they would really buy. A game... You know, sometimes it's a game needs a certain review score, because some people do really care about that. I hate moles, I hate moles! Moly moly moly- oh my gosh. Oh, not. I'm not doing good on time. Especially because I keep bouncing up. And I killed- I killed Zamboni, whoops. Uh, that was still for ports, and then there was still 30 See, FPS where they made to support 60. Um, I'm pretty sure it was any mm. game that did not work at 60. More important back then, because... Um, now, Grant, there are Xbox 360 and PS3 games that can do 60 FPS. Like, uh, uh, Gran Turismo 5 is a perfect example, because... Oh my gosh. Gran Turismo 5 is a perfect example in my mind, because it has well, a 1080p 60 mode. Um, but certainly... There's a lot of games that didn't support 30 or 60 FPS on the console, and in the same way that I'm playing it right now. Uh, like, I, I, I'm not saying people are like, I don't, I don't want to put it as like people are spoiled for 60 FPS because it's like, I do want games to really hit 60, and if, if not more, actually. Um, secretly, the toughest part of the, the level right here. Because they run away from you, so it's like, if you're not in the right spot... And you keep getting bounced, and then it's like, oh my gosh. But there are more of them, I guess, as you go. Oh! Oh! We're almost set, we're almost set! Where's the one? Where's one? Give it to me! There we go. We're good. We're good. Well done. Um, Total Biscuit uh, taught me to judge games heavily from their options the menu, especially ports. He is right. Total Biscuit was certainly right about a lot of things. Um, I, I I miss him, but yeah, Dark Souls One versus yeah yeah Dark, Dark Souls One is a very uh, atrocious PC port. Is it still playable? Yes, but it's certainly it's like yeah like. Yeah yeah. There there was no real effort, and on top of that when you target your game initially for one console, it's very expected that you do have a very limited, you know... Uh, people did fix it, yeah. They'll fix air quotes, because there's only so much you can do. Um, the S2 on PC, they did put in some effort, they did put in more effort. Like, you can run the game at higher than 720p. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's some modern examples, I believe a God of War on PC is a tremendously, amazingly good port. Um, and I know it's been a while, but it's like, that's like one where it's like, it's got like, not only, you know, all these graphics settings, but it's like, <laughs> had DLSS and more ray tracing than the actual original game. Uh, also I love this bit, technically it's an egg thief section. We gotta have a flying section, right? Um, so yeah, uh, and, 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 and yeah, like, it's a still, it's a Steam curated group around a gimmick. Um, now granted, it's a gimmick that I think we can all agree on a lot more. Uh, they thought of it early in development, probably, uh, completely flabbergasted by the amount of PC copies sold years after the game had come out on PlayStation, uh, so they probably expected a few people to buy it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, I mean, yeah, like, don't... These ports shouldn't really dismiss the 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 play the PC market because the PC market is definitely large and also long lasting. Of course, there's lots of games that will be sold, you know, years in the future. Like people are still buying um, like Civ Five or Civ Six <laughs> or both. Actually, people still buy both of those games. Civ Five came out in 2010. This is like it's like if you tell any game developer, ah, oh, yes, your game from 14 years ago. Still a very, very good seller. I'd be like shocked, but it's like, yeah, the PC market is very much like that. Every other console, you know, the console wears thin, and, uh, you know, people don't buy PS4 games uh, as much as they used to. Dark Souls, once the kicks out the Japanese devs, no longer disregarding it, combined with the Japanese PC game. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very glad that, like, because Japanese PC games were always on the, the back foot, I feel. There were a lot of them. And it's just, it was just because, and, and I completely get it, I wish it wasn't the case, but I get it. If you're not going to get much of a return, you know, I get why the developers put in little effort. Also, we got to fly back here because i got to get that key up there. I get why developers put little effort. Look at Age of Empires 2, Hidden Cup is currently running. Yeah, 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 Age of Empires 2 is, um... yeah. And sometimes that's just because the old games are easily moddable. We're in this... Um, I got this whole, whole rant maybe one day, uh, or I've said it before about, uh, DRM basically preventing these games from being able to be, you know, revitalized and re-brought up. Rip, rip Dark Spore, you know, I'll forever mention that one. Um, but I would still say that, yeah, you know, like, the PC market is more dedicated. What's like a console-only first-person shooter, and it's just like, no one remembers it anymore. Um... Someone's gonna tell me off if I say, like, one of the Killzone games. You have 30,000 plus current viewers of a major live stream every single day over the stretch of several, several hours for like one week already. Also games like, uh, things that, like Games Done Quick or, um, yeah, retro games and, and there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of categories and lots of things where it's like, yeah, people can like just revitalize and bring back these old games somewhat. I, I, I love that on the, the Retro Achievements community, someone does a custom server for Battlefield 2 on the PS2, and it's like, oh look, people play this game, like, regularly again. It just takes a little bit, a little bit of love, a little bit of nurturing, and it generally all works out. But yeah, like, the game devs can't, like, squander, and they can't, you know, if you put in too little effort, Somebody is hosting Dares X Multiplayer. Ooh, very nice. Oh, when Half-Life 1 got the, 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 the kind of, not a remaster, but just like a bit of a, hey, it's free and it's coming out again. And that kind of stuff. I don't know why my brain's thinking I have to hit these pedestals. What are we doing for the rest of this level? All you have to do is play the change, uh, change the connection string. Oh, we've done all the eggs. Yeah, okay. Uh, in the game files because yeah yeah that, that's always a thing when the master server dies um if it's as easy as quake 3 to change that's always great but you know sometimes it's harder and it's like yeah okay but it's usually a, a domain name somewhere you just gotta change this is a good question where this uh gem is good thing i've got a radar pointing up there i see Box do the thing while I'm flying. Oh, he can! Oh, because it's up here! Yeah, 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 yeah. There's tenors all around. Ten gems all around. And we're good! Uh, wherever the end of the level is. Uh, I think it was back there, so I might just fly back again. Uh, no, uh, no skill point in this level, by the way. 
Yeah, yeah, if it's a text editor, it should be fine. Uh, the Unreal 1 configs are very easy to edit because they're just text files, but yeah, if it's um, missing a bit, or, it's, or if, the, if a bit needs to be changed, it's just like, eh, just, just go for it. And here we go, out of the level, two more levels, and also the flying level, and the sparks level, and the boss fight. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I would also like to mention uh, two other honorable mentions for the, for the tweets. Uh, at GKR, Grant K. Roberts, as his profile name is, uh, says, The cool thing about liking video games is that you can go play video games instead of joining a weird cult and being wrong about everything. Now, he hasn't mentioned anything in particular, but the date is in mention, as well as the, uh, the association. We've got one last person, and this one's probably the most egregious one. Uh, we got at It's Kindred. Uh, saying, uh, the Steam Curator Harassment Group, Sweet Baby Inc. Detective, is led by this person. Lissa's Twitter handle. Here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported. I was with the, sorry, even with the discriminatory language filed off, the group itself still fails the code of conduct. Anyway, report the F out of this group and report the uh, creator since he loves his Steam account so much with screenshots of everything. He could have done two levels and sparks level and stuff. Spanish Inquisition. Two main weapons. <laughs> exactly. I love this, like, helmet. Helmet portal. The portals in this game are fun. I love that they're all themed. Um, now, I mentioned all three of these Twitter users because uh, if you didn't... Well, one, Twitter has the, um, the uh, community notes, so you could tell off the first one. Um, all three of these people work at Sweet Baby Inc. Every single... All three of them were all... Somewhat acting a bit unprofessional Hello. here. You must be Spyro. A lot of people are talking about all the things you've done for them. Do you think you could help find my girlfriend, Tara? She went off to raid the tomb of the stone golem, and I haven't seen her since. I'd go look inside the tomb myself, but you know there's all these scorpions and stuff. I do hate me my scorpions. Good old scorpions. We'll never say the name right. I know it's scorpion, but... Scorpion's a funny name. It's like Skellington. Skellington and... Oh my gosh, they're massive! It's one of those things that doesn't have an immediate positive effect, but everything is met. Yes, yes. You put in the effort to just, you know, make a little... Make something a little special. That's why I love, you know, every level has its own music, and... Um... For the most part in this game, its own enemies as well. These hands... It's like you could have done any kind of platform. There are so many platformers out there where it's just platform. It's just a thing floating out in space. Croc is probably a perfect example, and I love me my Croc. But you know what it is. It's like, yep, they're all the same platforms. Um, subconsciously. Oh, you got there in the end. Con I, I could tell. It's one of those, like, oh, this is probably one of the most annoying parts, is trying to, like, time this. Because you're gonna take multiple hits off that guy. That That's probably one of the most egregious ones as well. You could probably have just, like, taken the jump and tried to kill him later. I love these, uh, descending bits. A wonderful snare drum as well. Now this one. You got no hope, man. You're gonna lose all these lives to these people. Or well, maybe not. We might be winging it. We might be good. And there's a checkpoint over here, so you better you better just run in here and get the checkpoint. No more money bags in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so all three of these people work at Sweet Baby Inc. And I, I just called it unprofessional. I don't think the first person is being, like, crazy unprofessional. In isolation. Um, about this. They did, I mean, they, they're not going on about a Twitter rant. Um, but it's like, I don't know, is it a requirement that you gotta, like vet for your company and just say, you know, a Steam group is harassment. Because it's like, uh, it's, it's not, man. It's just, they're just targeting the stuff that your company makes. Like, you know, if they have a legit reason, which I, uh, I believe, you know, if you don't, if you don't like the stuff that the company makes or a company works on, that's fine. You should be able to boycott this kind of stuff. You should be able to boycott whatever you want, as long as people also are open to ascribing to that. Like, I, I said in that stream as well, I don't think everything Sweet Baby Inc. has ever worked on is bad to the point that you should not play it. But 
I do, and also, you know, to some degree, how much, how, how far did the sweet baby ink hand go into the jar of the game? We will never truly know. Hi Spyro, haven't seen you in a while. I'm just off for a bit of a walkabout right now. You know, sometimes you just long for the simple old-fashioned pleasures of yesteryear, don't you? The old-fashioned pleasures of yesteryear. I love this section because what does that mean? It's a side-scroller. <laughs> I love it. And it's also a bit painful because this makes you realize how much your horizontal momentum is lost. Um, so in that case, get used to doing double jumps as opposed to the bounce jumps because yeah, it's designed around that. I love it though, it's great. And you gotta hear this music again, so... Uh, the blue dot effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I feel like... I mean, there's a certain degree, I feel, of people taking Twitter too seriously. Uh, because ultimately, I don't think it really matters what, like, some people on Twitter say. But, given that these people work at their company, and they're basically... You know, the third guy was basically going, People should mass report a thing. I... You should not, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of mass reporting, because it's just like, that's that's just gaming the system. Um, scientifically proven that if you start looking, yes, this is called the, the, the Streisand effect, where it was like, Barbara Streisand was like, everyone don't look at the pictures of my house, to which everyone looked at the pictures of her house, and suddenly then knew where she lived. Um, yeah, if you look for racist, yeah, yeah. Oh, is it not the Streisand? I thought this was the Streisand. Maybe the Steam Group is the Streisand effect. Because it's like a lot of people have joined it. It's got like a hundred thousand, um, like, Steam followers now. It's pretty, it's pretty big. Um, that is not to say that it's legitimized because it is big. But I think the complaints can be, I mean, I, I think there's plenty of people who share the opinion to the point of... We can't just knock it off as like people are just trolls or that kind of stuff. I think there are, there is legitimate criticism that the things that just so happen to be worked on these people end up not being enjoyed. And I, to some degree, you know, me complaining about oh, oh no, I've goofed it, I've goofed it. Me complaining about my racing games not being, you know, uh, Uh, the blue dot effect is when you're shown 100 faces and are said to look for angry faces. There are no angry faces in the group. You'll start identifying non-angry faces as angry. It's about, ah, okay. Is, is that like, I mean, I don't know the effect, but is that like partially because if I tell you to look for a thing, you will find it. Just in general. Another cracked wall. We are finding cracked walls all over the shop. I should probably take out these guys. I got that egg. The Streisand effect is the act of trying to suppress information that itself is pulling more. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They, they're not really suppressing the idea that there is a Steam group. They're sort of pointing it out a bit more. Um, unintentionally, they're pointing out the the group in an attempt to stop people from looking at it or to, to you know, to demonize it. And it said that's not happening. Um, prey animal behavior. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a key. I feel like half of these levels have a key. Has that been the case? Useful when in danger. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I guess, like, you know, a lot of this stuff sort of plays into people's psychologies, and that's why uh, the the general vibe of, you know, social media does have dark patterns in it. So, be careful. Just because I'm pointing out some randos on Twitter and you see some big numbers does not mean anything is representative well, of the Spyro, world as a whole. I bet you're glad to see me. It just happens that I know the, uh, password to open the door to the tomb of the stone golem. But, uh, it seems to have slipped my mind for the moment. If you know what I mean. Hmm. Okay, another 800 <laughs> well, gems. Then. The password to open the tomb is... Are you ready? <laughs> Gullible! Gullible? Uh, Blue Dog Effect is also when you're a kid and staying up late and using the computer with the parents away and every noise makes you jump back. Ah, yeah. Hey, okay, for a bit, it's still here but not tight. Okay. Uh, that's good to know that there's like some, you know, studied effects as well and also like everything is sort of. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're good. Um, everything is sort of. Well. I don't know if everything, but a lot of things are some kind of known behavior, at least. So catch yourself if you're falling prey to stuff like this as well. 
will boost my way out of here because uh, this is the end of the level. Also, uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, hello there. Oh, well, look at you. Showing up here to raid the tomb after I've done all the work. I spend all day pressing switches and shoving boxes around and you just waltz in here expecting to claim the treasure. Well, might as well have it. Only turned out to be a lousy egg anyway. Okay. Yes, obvious reference is obvious. <laughs> and yes, those games are just pu pulling switches and pushing boxes around. And I enjoy them. <laughs> um, just love it, love it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would also like to mention as well, and the reason why I tie it in with the original Gamergate is that uh, uh, the uh, the original person in question, the uh, at Lego Butts, this is for a character attack. This is not actually um, you know related to the thing that they're complaining about right now um, about the the Steam group. But uh, they worked with uh, Zoe Quinn to DDoS the Fine Young Capitalist website back in 2013 when they were running a game jam. Um, Self-admitted, it's 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 on uh, it's an archive tweet. I don't know if it's still live. Um, uh, she also worked at a company uh, which simultaneously employed uh, Anita Sarkeesian and uh, was it Jonathan McIntosh, who worked together on the feminist frequency stuff. And like, not again. It's a character attack, and also like there's a reason why I have not mentioned Anita Sarkeesian up to this point because. Again, that's not really relevant. It's, it's not really. But the same people keep showing up. The same people are in weirdly high pa places of power, sticking their fingers into the uh, creative jars that is one person's game. Or not one person, because it's never one person. But like a company's game that in some cases does not need any extra, you know, functionality or or touching up on by a Canadian outsourced to company. The uh, super high so like I I don't I don't really like the ride the um I don't know how do I phrase this. Also uh <laughs> super high impact underwater missile launches. This is amazing. The shark riders. They're carrying the latest JX5 underwater tracking ammunition. Wow. Uh so we got the manta ray from the Spyro 2. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you got a, you got a laser, a, a wonderful laser. Uh, there is a skill point involved for shooting all the kelp. And you gotta make sure you do this, because, uh, I don't think you can, well, maybe you can ride the thing. But I don't know if you gotta exit the level in order to do that, which is a little annoying. But I, I just go for the kelp first. Also, I love the, again, the spinning icon on the bottom. I love it. Um, also, I think there's a jar that you're like, you have to actually shoot, so maybe there is a way to... Oops. There's two jars, even better. Um... So yeah, I, like, I don't feel like, you know, these past occasions exactly are the issue that this person's discussing. And ultimately, at the end of the day, they were talking about layoffs earlier, and, uh, there was a, there was a thing earlier about, um, I think it was, like, on February 29th, um... Like, uh, people who worked on, developers who worked on Google Play Music have been, like, going at strike for, like, months. Maybe, maybe even a whole year. Um, because, I don't know, they don't like the conditions, they're not being paid enough, the, uh, the turnover rate is kind of high. Um, every single person at a, like, a public and televised town hall event uh, was informed by someone, live, everyone at that event was laid off. Every single person. I 100% agree that it is not the, you know, the diversity thing that is the sole reason. It might be a contributing factor, I can't tell, but it is not the sole reason why there's mass layoffs going on in lots of industries, but including the games industry, the tech industry, there's, like, lots of industries are experiencing this. Um, I, like, you know, here's, here's my politics brain on, I do believe that there was massive amounts of spending by lots of companies during the, uh, the lockdown periods of 2020. Like, the amount of, like, growth, the amount of insane capital growth that so many companies got during those years. Uh, obviously, you can kind of tell not all, and in some cases not a lot, uh, gonna be able to keep
keep that. I think Nvidia might be one of the very few companies uh, because they literally make the thing that people are relying on now, like to, to spawn massive business. Um, but I do agree, lots of companies probably, you know, went massive in the investments and stuff like that, and the, you know, sort of floundering at the fact that people don't have money anymore, or the costs of are getting too high. I think also one of the things the Google Play music people were complaining about was a, a policy of going back to work, like back into the office that they didn't agree with. Um, and obviously that's a that's a tricky thing as well. Like if your company said, oh yeah, you know, you can work from home and stuff, and then they basically demand that you use their office space that they pay for. And for some reason, they think that the now response should be comrade, fire all the employees instead of like, that? like oh, by the way, you know, just I don't need the office space. I don't know. There's lots of lots of stuff around around this. Um, woolly mammoth for five minutes, but it should still be okay. What? Uh, so I do agree with this person on that one. Uh, but them singling out this uh, Steam group is not... I don't believe that is the, uh, you know... Re well, I, I mean, as you put it, it's not the battle to be won. And I think people should be able to make Steam groups about whatever, and Steam curator groups about whatever. Um, what people should be, you know knowledgeable on is why people have problems with you know sweet baby ink and why people are generalizing that everything sweet baby ink has ever worked on no matter how much no matter how small like literally all they could have said was yeah 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 name and credits and then um you know suddenly people will now react when really we don't know but there are some things where it's like, yeah, no, they were the, effectively the the big writers because they were rewriting certain bits or stuff like that. Some people will claim this kind of stuff. You can't, I don't know if you can exactly disprove, but we certainly should run on what's the facts. And also, as a buyer, you don't even need the facts. You can, I don't know, form your own opinions, come to your own conclusions. How do you feel? What kinds of things do you even want to encourage in the industry? Because also, on top of that, um, some people don't like the, like, the concept of what they do anyway, so they're like, well, they worked on it, so therefore, you know, they don't like the concept. Uh, is it, in my opinion, is it overboard? Uh, maybe? I don't know. There's some examples where I'm like, I don't like the things that people claim some developers have done. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, try and, uh, What's the term? Moderate out my opinion on this, because uh, I feel like if you say things in a certain way, you somehow seem very, very strong, very, very like harsh on your opinion. When in reality, I don't know. I don't. I don't play a lot of like newer games because I found a lot of them, design-wise, and not you know not even relating to the writing and stuff. A lot of them, design-wise, sort of stop appealing to me. I think Middle Earth: Shadow of War or Shadow of Mordor. Um, were sort of two examples where I'm like, these just, the idea is neat, but like, ugh, I, something does not click with me on those games. And it's not the writing, it's not the, like, I think, it's just like the inevitable grind and progression. Where it's like, I just don't feel very accomplished after a while. I feel like I've just done the same thing again and again, and they've just got a number telling me that I've done it better. But I'm really not, or I got like abilities that don't really make my game different unless I start spamming them all the time. But I don't feel like I'm earning it, I just feel like I'm told I can enjoy it at some point. Um, and to that I would say, some of the people I follow on Twitter who have complained about the Sweet Baby Ink stuff, have also complained about, you know, like... The one uh, GDC speech by the God of War designer where he basically said the game is just a roller coaster ride that never goes above 10 meters off the ground. Where it goes hard a bit, and then it goes easy and they give you a new mechanic. And then it goes hard a little bit, and then it goes easy and they give you a new mechanic. And it's like, yeah, I completely get why people hate games that don't just keep going up in difficulty. Some people don't like that. And I think it is... Very, 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 very cool, uh, uh, foolish. I think there's more gems in that one part. I'm just, hold on, how many gems have I got? Because I just did a lap around the level. I'm missing 14. 14. I think they must be in either of these side areas, but I'm not sure how much I would have missed in that first side area. 
So we'll check out this one again. We'll go around on foot, I guess. Or on, on leg. Does that mean it is very easy to miss? I should probably just be using the radar. I guess there is none. Okay. Look at that, rely on the radar a bunch. I love the Manta Ray, so good. Um, but yeah, like, there's lots of different, you know, modern design things that people don't like about video games. And to some degree, maybe I'm a bit of a boomer here. When I was growing up, I remember people complaining about 3D games and having terrible camera angles and basically not having challenge. The games were all about just pushing forward until you hit some endpoint in the story. That was a complaint I saw a lot of people make about games in like 2002. And I thought they were not correct. And to some degree, I do agree. These are the kinds of games that I enjoy. I, I do enjoy- oh, it's right there on the ledge on my right. That's why I've been missing it all the time. Um, but I also completely get their opinions. And I also am glad that, hey, you know, indie developers can make the kinds of games that you know, is appreciated by these people. These people, like, hopefully, have enough content. And if they don't have enough content, then hopefully they at least they enjoy the stuff that has come out. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what on earth is going on, as long as there is stuff people are liking and producing and making money, you know, with. Like, I want people to be rewarded for making good art and making the art, uh, you know, games and, and music and whatever, that like people really really care about and people really really want to to experience and play and 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 listen to and and see and all that stuff um it's disheartening when people phrase it as like how do i put it i don't want the whole world of the games industry to conform one way or the other and i don't think it's you know great to completely condemn games for doing well, no, I kind of hate microtransactions. Let's get rid of those. <laughs> no game has ever done microtransactions like in a way that I really like, except for like uh, Cut the Rope, where you basically paid for um, like each level as you went through, and you basically paid like just a regular game's amount worth of money after you played a regular game's amount. And if you only played like 10 levels, and you only, you know, you might not have paid any money, or if you paid like a little bit. This level is cool. It also has uh, cacti, which do drop. Uh, <laughs> drop a. Uh, oh my gosh. Drops gems. We got these big boxes as well. Or barrels. Oh my gosh, I'm taking the hits. Look at these dinosaurs. I love them. Uh, but yeah, at, at the end of the day, that's really what I want. And all this complaining about a Steam group is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Duly noted. Pay attention. Hi there, Mr. Man. Oh, gosh darn it, Spyro! I came in here to check on my prisoner, only to find out he'd somehow got away again. Then when I came in to look around for clues, one of them rowdy dinosaurs went and locked me in. Now they're out there they causing all sorts of trouble, and there's not a thing I can do about it. There's not a thing I can do about it. I'll get you out. This is reminding me of, um... The, the dinky little, like, prison in the wire head. This is a lady comes in with a gun and gets him to open the door. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that's my more mild and, and hopefully trying to... I don't know, some people call me a bit of a fence sitter for, for, you know, not fully condemning or, like, this company should die. Like, I don't want this company... I don't really want Sweet Baby Inc. to go out of business, but I would prefer Sweet Baby Inc to make the things that I like. I would really, you know, it'd be nice if everyone could make the things that I like, but I get it at the end of the day. If there's enough things that I do like that people are making, then cool. I don't like microtransactions, I don't like, you know, this, uh, I, like, there's some dialogue that I just, you know, isn't really for me. I'll mention the racing game dialogue. Um, I think I said, I said, like, in that stream four weeks ago as well, that, like, I haven't even played most of these games, so whatever criticisms I have of them are very superficial. They're just things that I've noticed. Uh, I mentioned uh, Forspoken as well. Forspoken is a game where it's, like, I don't find the character design very appealing. There's something just kind of, like, like, she's got a cape. The cape's cool. But it's, like, there's something very, like, nonchalant and... Uh, like, I don't, I mean, I guess maybe, but like, I don't feel like the character is, um, exactly putting in her effort. 
maybe, again, maybe that's because I haven't played the game, and that's all marketing and all the demo has really shown me. But, you know, that's a point that I have, given the experience of the game I've had, you know, to this point. Also, I love this! Chicken, chicken dinosaur on the chicken roundabout turret. Amazing. I say this is the last level, but is it really the last level when we, if we go to this screen as well? Uh, it, oh, it is the last level. Oh my gosh. I did not do these in order though, unfortunately. Sorry. Sorry people, I did not do them in order. I gotta do the speedway as well. <laughs> Whoops. Sort of glancing past that. Oh my gosh, I'm not having a fun time taking out these guys without taking a hit. But I did knock a big dinosaur into the, uh... To the, ca uh, the chest, which did break just then. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, a, a lot of this is sort of Twitter drama. Like, I mean, it is a little bit, but it is leaking out, and also people should be aware. People should be aware that, yes, I, I, I you know, I said these, this is a little bit unprofessional because it's like, yeah, you don't have to bat for your company like that. And if, if people legitimately have a problem with your company, you know, the, the, the solution is not to vilify and say, ah yes, they're, they're harassing people and stuff like that. The oh my gosh, another wall to break open. The solution is to, you know, hear them and listen, because that would lead me to uh, another topic of, um, I, uh, I'm a, I have a Fediverse instance. I, I run a Pleroma that's just me, but it's just so people can, you know, interact with me from any instance on the internet, uh, like that. And, uh, Gab is a site that uh, was sort of framed as a Twitter alternative back when Twitter did ban a lot of people back in like 2016, 2017. Um, uh, it sort of attracted a lot of people who are, you know, the kind of people to get banned from Twitter. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't really antagonize people on Twitter, so I, I probably don't put myself in the camp of getting banned. Maybe someone, maybe someone will try, I don't know. Um, Watch out for the TNT boxes, they shake when you go next to them. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but uh, Gab recently announced that they would start charging people for all file uploads. Any images, any uh, audio, any videos, which video is the, you know, the higher bandwidth and the higher, you know, storage costs. But it's like, even photos? And you're charging them to, like, you have to be a subscriber. Um, so inevitably, there's been a bit of an exodus of, uh, Gab users, they've been flocking to other, you know, uh, Fediverse instances, Mastodon, uh, Pleroma ones, um, just anything really. Uh, not all of them, but definitely quite a bunch. Uh, and then some of those people are also realizing that, uh, also break open this wall. Hi, how are you doing? Well, I'll be. So that's how my prisoners keep escaping. Here, take this dinosaur egg away before it hatches and causes more trouble. I think it must have been the run of the litter, though. Oh. Oh, okay. Booba and Kiki. <laughs> Oop. What <laughs> you? Um. Jumping Jehoshaphat! That's the cutest looking dinosaur I ever did see. Nice. And then he just runs, and the, the, the bars meant nothing. There's a bunch of places that we can actually, like, go to right here as well. Like, they're just all over the shop as well. Um, and there's also two skill points in this level. Last level, gotta have two of them. Uh, but yeah, they started charging people for, for, the, for the images, which is just like, ugh. And this, I guess this is significant because it's like, yeah, this is an example of you can't beg people for money, and no matter what, you know, you know, like, Fight for, for your values. If you're not providing a service to someone and you're not doing the things that they want to, you know, you know, pay money for, they're not gonna do it if you're forcing them. They're gonna sure bounce. Me, I could be a deputy. So I'm up to help clear out all the dinosaurs. <laughs> Alrighty. I like this bit. But it is tough. It is tricky. Uh, 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 if you just calm down for a second and if, stop if, if, all if, that <laughs> whooping and hollering, I can tell you what's going on. The Bailey gang are well, what's going on? The buildings over there. It was Crazy Frog before or after this game? Out. I want to say it was 99. Well, Darn good tootin'. luck to you. 
So I love this section because you're like, okay, here I go, and it's a rail shooter. Hey, we got the Doom health again. Shoot all the enemies and make sure they don't hit you. And you can also shoot the windows, but don't worry if you miss any of the windows. It's not too bad. What you do need to make sure is that you hit a skill point at the end of everything. You'll see it. You'll, you'll see it in action, don't worry. I love how, like, Agent 9 gets, like, two very, very different bits. Two very, very different sections. Uh, one's the, the Doom level from earlier, and now we got this- oh, dang it. And now we got this part. Just an on-rail shoot. In fact, like, the only other part he had was in the, um, in the Haunted Tomb. That was the only other side section he had. And it's like, well, that's a regular, like, level, but it's, like, interesting that you barely get to do the regular levels with Agent 9. You're just like, I don't know, just do whatever kind of shooting gameplay we want, which is very good fun. And I guess, you know, let's let's be a bit retrospective since this is the last major level of the game. Um, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, since this is the last major level of the game, uh... I've really enjoyed these levels, so I think they're, they're very good fun. Uh, oh my gosh, his head is decapitated. Um, there's something actually quite, like, wonderful about, like, all the different ideas and things that they toyed around. There's that guy. Hit him, you get a skill point, and I get my health back. Shoot some windows for funsies. It's nothing really. You know, I don't have to shoot the windows. Um, but I think that this game's got lots of, like, you know, really, really fresh ideas and things like that. And honestly, if I had to say, how would I rank the three Spyro games? Um, I would honestly put this one in the middle. I'd put Spyro 1 at the top, and I'd actually, despite me never growing up with this one, I actually think it's got some of the, you know, more creative mini games and things like that. It sort of fully embraces it, and it doesn't have, like, some weird ideas that Spyro 2 has. I think the different characters definitely lead into some better types of gameplay. The Bailey gang was trying so hard to steal this egg. That's not like them at all. I reckon that's not cash money. Must have put them up to it. Okay. I don't know a Sharon song. I'm sorry. And obviously, you're at the beginning of the area, so that means you got to walk through and pick up all the gems that you were definitely walking past. We'll get there. I like these wanted posters though, very nice. Uh... Yeah. Uh... So bonus points as well, uh, yeah, some of the instances I follow on the Fetty, uh... They're getting the influx of users, and they're like, yeah, we actually get, like, so many donations just because we run a service that people like. And I really appreciate that, and honestly, if you, you know, if you're a, a you know, uh, I guess, if you frequent a site, uh, and it's a small site, you know, consider? I don't know, it depends. Like, I, I guess big sites as well, you know, they need money as well. Wikipedia doesn't run ads, and obviously they gotta make money somehow, so... I get it, um, but I definitely feel like, you know... Smaller sites would generally, I don't know, in my opinion, would have a better proportion of... subscribers. Checko! Oh, I gotta, I gotta talk about the F1 at the end. Um, they probably have a better subscriber rate, I, I feel, or, or donator rate. Um, and I think it is just because, again, ties to the point, people get heard. If you want people to part ways with your money, the easiest thing you can start doing is listen and legitimately listen. Gauge your users, survey your users, and try to find out exactly what are their pain points. If you're listening to your users, you know, a lot of your problems will, will figure themselves out. Because you know, you've got an idea, you'll go with it. Lots of smaller games, oh no, people don't like, you know, parts of our game. Let's listen, let's figure it out, let's get some people to play test, let's, you know, gauge it. And not just, you know, close off our ears and just only focus on the support in our community, but like, legitimately, like, you know. And, and, and to some degree as well, you can be like, you know, I have a creative vision and I'm not going to let, like, the masses pressure me into something else, I guess it's something like that. But, at the end of the day as well, it's like, you know, you should value your users and your customers and, and stuff like that. And when there is a mass boycott and when there is a mass... I don't know where some of the rooms go, by the way, they're just... They're just rooms. 
magical rooms. They don't go anywhere. Um, plenty of games where devs didn't listen in EA to their players. I thought you were referring to Electronic Arts from I was like, yeah, they don't listen to me. But also, yeah, in early access, yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, like, games, you know, especially, it, it really, it doesn't matter what stage you are, you know, you gotta listen, you gotta, you gotta focus on, oh, summon in here, summon here, oh, that's it. Okay, we're good in this section. In through the outdoor, down to, down the upstairs. Hellsign was incredibly immersive horror game. Keyword in that sentence is was, right? There we go, swim down the bottom of here, and what do we get? That's right, there's actually a portal down here. And I didn't miss a pot. They changed gameplay mechanics for the vision of another level type. Ah, uh, like... One of them dinosaurs oh. threw an egg down this flooded mine shaft. I'd get it back for Shaft. you, but I ain't such a strong swimmer. That's why I, like, for me as well, I, early access games always, like, throw me off, because it's just like, um, you know, I sort of don't want to see what the game's like in progress. Um, I don't know. Uh, this as well, there are, oh, okay. You're gonna see me purposely die. There's a skill point for hitting all of these, um, uh, seahorses in this section as you go. Uh, I don't know if you get gems for them. Maybe you don't. Um, they did it for the established levels and said, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, changing the feel of the game is... Mm, it's, not, it's not great unless you can really, like, shake things up or something. But yeah, it, like, I think the worst part about doing this on early access games is that the type of game that people did like and you changed it on them, it's like, you know, they're gonna be apprehensive because they can't play the game in the state they liked it before. And if it is mediocre in the end, it's worse. I think there are some games where they change their vibe mid-development, and if you were aware of what was going on, maybe you'd have a preference, but maybe at the end of the day... There we go, that's an actual kill right there. Maybe at the end of the day it is... Oh, oops. I got rid of the one strength. The worst part as well is, like, can you refund an early access game? If you're curious, look up Hell Sign on YouTube. I'll give that a look. Um, there was a... I'm trying to recall another game. Oh, I guess you don't have to do it in one go. I guess you just gotta get all the... Get all of them eventually. Um, basically, you're a paranormal investigator. They didn't turn it into like a rhythm game or a fashion designer game, did they? <laughs> Twist of the century right there if you did that. Okay, let's get the seahorse. Oh, I thought I was taking that really wide. That that's the worst one. That one right there. It's catch that for like two frames. Do you like how there was a tunnel sequence in like the first world as well? Sort of back, except now you can go up and down and it's Oops. Now it's just spots on the ground and the only difference between the tools is range. Ah, you, you, got, you gotta make sure your items are unique, at least. That's just game design 201. Like, I don't know, someone will say, Oh, I've never developed a game, and the answer is... Not in full. Curious people can scout my YouTube channel for the attempts. But I didn't know how to program back then, so... I don't think it was a very, very, uh, meaningful attempt. Oh my gosh, lots of them, and then they put one right here. Which is always mean. That's such a mean spot that was for the last one. Mighty fine swimming, young dragon. Dude, a lot of devs don't value investigation as well. It's very, very like curious. That it's just like, and and I I think there is a fine line between investigation and wasting my time, just literally spending forever. Um. Yeah, the other core system was combat, which was mediocre but fine with you, mate. Yeah, yeah, as well. That's a lot of. There's a lot of games with. Not great combat, but it's like when the combat is contextualized very nicely, which is sort of how RPGs do it a lot. Like, not saying all RPGs have boring combat, but that the ones with less than, you know, subpar combat are sometimes saved by amazing settings and cool set pieces and, you know, characters and stuff like that. So, take out all that stuff. You know, good luck playing an RPG with no good characters. That is the last skill point, by the way. 
Uh, I believe we should be able to see it on the atlas, if I keep scrolling right, right? Beach party! Yes, yes. We might not- oh, I think I've gotta beat the game in order to see the, the skill points. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping off the top of my head that was all of them, but I'm pretty sure it was. The combat being not amazing was immersive. You're an underdog, and on the superhuman way in games like Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, it's like you have to be a superhuman in order to like input that kind of stuff. Uh, I think the only remaining stuff is this gem is just chilling out in the open that I just didn't get. I got rid of the immersion. Yeah, that's a shame. That sucks that they do that. It happens, I get it, but it's also like, yeah, you know, as a... Oh, yeah, this. This is one of the, like, oh, oh, no, it's such a tricky jump. <laughs> in contrast, in Hellsign, you could use traps and stuff. We're going to keep taking stabs at that jump, dang it. Big UV floodlights to damage the ghosts and stuff. Like Ghostbusters on the NES. Okay, take two on the, the jump. It's a tricky jump, man. It's a tricky jump. I think that's every gem as well. Nice. And that's all the eggs. Dan's the man. I seem to push through these four levels much quicker. Uh, skill points just give you uh, an extra life, but at the end of the game, if you manage to get every single one of them, uh, there is a small little epilogue that you can witness. There's probably a better way to like... Oh no, I'm stuck on this ledge. Oh, the better way is from here. That makes a bit more sense. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, and they're all hidden and the game doesn't really explain what they are, but it's just the fun little, you know, easter egg. And when I first played Spyro 2, like ages ago on the channel, or the second time um, as well, I was like, I didn't know about the skill points. I knew about some of them, but I didn't know about all of them. So I didn't know what you got when you got all of them. Okay, good stuff. Uh, we're gonna do the, the speedway. And the sparks level eventually, but the speedway first. To the speedway, to the harbor with one U, or no U's, sparks level and final boss. And the speedway, and the speedway. And there is, uh, I didn't play this one as a kid, but Spyro 2 I played as a kid. <laughs> Only one or two, yeah, yeah. And I had to enter the dragonfly as a kid, but I never had three. So this is like, uh, Spyro 2 had skill points, Spyro 1 retroactively had skill points added as part of the remaster in 2018. I don't know if actually it even does anything in that game. Sparks, you're giving it away! And of course, uh, if you play the Ratchet and Clank games, all three of them have skill points. Uh, to the point that you actually have very meaningful bonuses uh, out of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw someone say Overwatch is like, um, like turning eight in like three months, and it's like, oh my gosh, the amount of things from like the 2010 is now turning a very, very ripe age. It's like, oh my gosh. We defeat the seagulls by <laughs> flaming their buttocks. Yeah, if there's one thing I will, you know, criticize this game for, it's like, eh, the flying levels don't. The speedways don't do it for me as much. I don't mind the design, but it's like, look at that, man. They, they just, they're just designed it a certain way. And then we're going to play Enter the Dragonfly at some point, and you're going to scream because it's almost this approach, but it doesn't line up. It doesn't match. Lobsters, though, I'll tell you that. And the sand. <laughs> Very nice. So yeah, the moral is don't don't charge people for things that they weren't really gonna pay. And I know it's kind of you know when you're on a site, you gotta make money somehow. And there are some sites that do fail. I do remember uh, posting. I remember mirroring videos to VidMe uh, back in the day. Um, don't look up Vidby now, by the way. Someone uh, bought the URL and then points it to porn, so probably don't do that. Um, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. We're good, we're good, we're good. I got it. <laughs> Woo! Um, so don't actually go to Vidme, but Vidme was like trying to compete as a YouTube alternative, 
and video hosting is expensive. And they were not making money, they didn't really have, I think they had donations, but it just wasn't enough for the amount of users that were flocking to the site. It faltered out and it basically bankrupted very quickly. Um, which is a shame, it is a shame. But I feel like a site like Gab and these microblogging and the fact that you're re-encoding these videos for very low, you know, bandwidth consumption anyways. Like, a Twitter video is so heavily compressed. Like, pe people should be very aware of how blocky a Twitter video is. Also, Rip Kobe, I miss him. Anyway, we gotta race the blue-footed booby- boobies? I forgot they wrote that. The red dots, don't you- don't you mean the blue dots? Yeah, all good. The blue stars, though. The blue star theory. Uh... Yeah, I hinted at the mass layoffs. I don't really have an opinion. Like... I've got an opinion. I don't have a, you know... What can we do? It's just... I don't know, man. I, I've sort of been hinting at a video game crash for... Years to my mates, and I've probably mentioned on, on various streams here and there. Um, it's not... Uh, anyone's fault in particular, but I think it is a degree of like, oh, oh, there we go. I do like this race, though. This race is cool. Um, like, I, I just feel like, yeah, games are too expensive. That's it. Like, not just to the end user, although they charge for the microtransactions and stuff, but like, to make. It's like, this is, this is like the, the one, the one freaking meme of like, guys, help my budget, $20 food. $300 rent, $5,000, like, you know, Bionicles, like, 20, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, you guys can trim out a lot of stuff that is too expensive. Yeah, true, it is a general crash. The the video game crash, it's gonna be a, it's, I don't know, it's gonna be a kind of gnarly crash. I'm currently, like, trying to save up money for a house. And I'm at, I'm at the point where it's like, yeah, if I borrow money for a house, the, like, people I'm loaning money from, in interest, can buy three Lamborghinis. Like, the amount of interest I have to pay in order to get a house is so absurd. Like, I just, I just put it like that and I go, no matter, like, the amount... <sighs> the desire of getting a house now does not outweigh that. Does not outweigh the basically doubling of the, the worth that I have to pay back. Um, so the more I, I buy now, or I save now, actually in my eyes is like double the value. Because it's like, oh, you know. Then I don't have to pay it back. Extra. If it was like, if I had like 10% interest, if I borrowed $800,000 and I only had to pay back $80,000 more, it'd be fine. But when it's like $650,000 extra, it's like, what? <laughs> I don't know, that, that's for me. Um, so to me, I'm like, hopefully there's a housing crash. Uh, so that I can buy a house, like it doesn't cost anywhere near as much, or something like that. Um, but I don't know, I think everyone's experiencing this, every industry, because it's just like, stuff gets more expensive. As stuff gets more expensive, the, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of money people need to make goes up, which it can do for a little bit, and then people realize making salaries go up makes prices go up. And so on, and we start reaching this, you know, oh, lockstep. Uh, the whole point of the government is to sort of be a bit of an arm on the market somewhat, and, and go, oh, you know, like we're gonna we're gonna subsidize costs because everyone's paying into the government, which means the government has the ability to offset costs into things that do need offsetting. Um, but yeah, I like I don't know the the problem accelerates, and the money the government has. Uh, dwindles and especially it's in debt. The government is in debt, so it's like, ah, what do you do? All governments, this is not any government in particular, and not any one uh, party involved, for reference. Uh, let's not be too, too, too biased, too political. I think a lot of, a lot of Western world politics plays out basically the same, no matter who you're talking to. I don't know. I don't know. Guess what? He's chilling in this building. Where Hi there, Hunter. Where do flying sheep saucers keep coming from? I just saw another one grab an egg and fly off. This one's super fast, but his saucer is damaged, and it's leaving smoke rings. I think I can keep up with him as long as I can make it through the rings. Oh my I'm gosh, it's Superman 64 mode. Down. I'm gonna chase him down. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <coughs> I, I tried. 
That's right. Oh my gosh, I'm right at Hunter's butt. He's occupying 70% of the screen. This is almost like the Manta Ray part with the, um, the, the letterboxing. I love it as well. You get closer to him as you go, so uh, it gets trickier, but also so nearsighted. Just stay close and you'll get there. And I think he rubber bands a little bit, so you don't have to worry about taking corners better. Uh, oh, <laughs> I see the messages, I just can't peer over just yet. Ah. Ah. This is the this is the real tricky part. There we go. <laughs> Nearly crashed on that. There we go. Uh, plenty of games that once again show you don't need super uh, good graphics. Yes. You need crisp graphics that and distinct graphics. Close. But not every game needs to be super awesome graphics. Look the at the chat. I'm back to the butt. Land. I'm back to me. I'm not sitting on a Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, I think one of the most amazing realizations I had is that um, people who do art for games are told to redo the grass every time. There's a lot of games where they just don't get to reuse the grass textures. The amount of extra wasted effort that game developers have to do in making a texture that is so high quality, no one's gonna care if it's the same grass as another game. Especially within your own company, come on. Um, like, there's a lot of stuff like that where it's like they just pour the money into making all these art assets, which a lot of them as well, a lot of artists will make stuff that doesn't get used in the game. So if you got $6,800, 6,800 gems, uh, you're missing out because, uh, well, we can't do the Sparks level just yet. So we got to do a final boss! Oh my gosh! We're finally here! Too many games as a service. Oh, yeah. The, that Suicide Squad game is just like, uh, such an emblematic example of just like, ugh. Ugh. Why? Just make a game. And that's why Power, yeah. And Power World's early access, you know, like... Okay. <laughs> um, the last e uh, no, what's going on with the last epoch? Really good. Uh, the sorceress is gonna do a bunch of stuff, and I had completely forgotten that. All you gotta do is wait for Agent Nine to shoot down things from the sky, because uh, the sorceress is uh, thick-skinned, I guess. So you hear stuff like that, and now you gotta. Well, take a hit. Also, is that the uh, the Sonic Adventure? Let me start the level. Sonic Adventure 2, rather. The cannon is good, but uh, it's just gonna hit you at some point. But we'll get there. Uh, a decent Diablo game. I do like me uh, clones of games that do it better. Uh, Path of Exile is a classic example. I hear a lot of people talk about. All right, come on! I gotta, I gotta hit her at some point. Like, I guess. Come on! <laughs> I'm not doing a good job here. There you go. There you go. Easy pickings. No, she's just gonna run all the way to the other side of the field. And then, she, and then she just wanders off. Oh my gosh! Diablo 4 and Path of Exile. I'll hit her once, I swear. Oh, I got one! I got one hit! Uh, in terms of, uh, looks better than PoE. There you go, two hits. Uh, but less complex, still more complex than Diablo 4. Is Diablo 4 really, like, that simple as well? Because it's weird, like, Diablo 4 is a, an example where it's like, I heard so much praise from the journalist, this is this is my point from earlier of like when you know me as a reader, when I disconnect from the things that the journalists are saying, I cannot really comment as I ignore Diablo 4 just like it deserved. Sort of like everything Blizzard has made recently, right? Hopefully my uh, Mario Kart is a little easier to steer around, and also I get multiple uses out of the same the same tool. Oops. Shot right past a freaking armpit as well. Really cool leveling system, skill system. I'm actually you know, the only Diablo clone I've really played is uh, I played a little bit of Diablo 3, but I really should give it like you know a better go. And uh, Dark Spore. 
I think Dark Spore has probably soured my opinion of all Diablo clones because I know how it do end up. Even if Diablo uh, 2 and 3 or 2 and 1 are going to be like that on maybe Diablo 2 now on PC. Oh, come on. Titan Quest and Grim Dawn I love. I should really get into more of those because I, I feel like strategy games... Um, I feel like I've played a bunch of JRPGs and I've still not played enough of them. Like there's lots of JRPG franchises where it's like yeah, I've not played enough of those. There we go, very, very nice. It is a final boss, what do you expect? It is a final boss, but it sort of just plays like the other bosses as well. Which is sort of how Spyro 2 was as well. But they are more involved. Like you gotta you gotta hit that boss a ton of times. Which is uh, doing the retro achievements for not taking hits is kind of gnarly as well. I love these flying sources though. Because now it's like, ah, uh, you can't catch me, bro. Ooh. Uh, Sorry, sorry, I know they're not JRPGs, I just mean I don't play enough of certain genres of games, and JRPGs are one of them. Strategy games are usually another, um... I've played a bunch of Western RPGs, not like CRPGs, or, um, yeah, in this case, like, Diablo style, the, the looter style, uh, style, I've not played a ton. Uh, Xenoquest. Xenoblade? Yeah, I, I have played Xenoblade. I've played Xenosaga. Uh, also, she falls in the lava and very dies. And she chucks an egg at you for some reason. Yeah, yeah, I played the first one. I've not played the remaster and I've not played two or three, but I did play X. And then I got, I got like, hard locked because I was not like, next level and I had to fight a boss that I couldn't fight in a side quest in the post game. Oh, off I go. One of the first bounty quests bugged out. Hang on. <laughs> The boss had spawned. There's, yeah, there's always a lot of like weird bugs and those kinds. Of, well, that game in particular, I guess. You're a real comedian sometimes, Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> Maniacal laughter. Uh, you know, I still have to find the rest of the dragon eggs. Plus, Hunter seems to have disappeared again, so I should go make sure he's not in more trouble. You haven't seen him, have you? Huh? Me? Oh, no, no. If I do happen to encounter him, however, I will most certainly inform you immediately. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, to, to get to Colony Night. Yeah, I remember that part sort of bugged out for me as well. It's a yeah, I think the Wii version was easier to get I into. Also, hi there, Mars character. To take me to the Dragon Worlds, but somehow I ended up here. Maybe my coordinate tables are out of date by a thousand years. That would explain why the book was so cheap. So, now that you're done saving the world again... Are you going to visit me in Avalar? Sure, Alora, but I still have to find the rest of the eggs and, well, Hunter's <laughs> Camera disappeared mugging. again. Did you say Hunter? Well, hey, I can help. I just saw him sneak off with... Uh, uh, -huh. uh Agent Nine, isn't that a Rhinoc over in those bushes? A uh, Rhinoc! You want a piece of me, Rhinoc boy? Eat laser punk! Yeah, I thought you signed like colony like We're six hiding. or something. Uh, I'm sure Hunter is but yeah, it always hand. sucks when it's a long game like this and then uh, just casual mean, side quest sure bugging. Turn up soon. Promise you'll come turn up soon, for what? Okay? Also, Alora without the microphone popping. <laughs> Did they get the same person to do her voice in the remaster? Now, how I many times have I told you not to tease that moose? It was Billy's idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that true, Billy? <laughs> Hold that thought, Billy. Spyro, great to see ya. Hi, Sheila. I've been looking for Hunter all day. Have you seen him? <laughs> Sorry, Spyro. Hunter made me promise not to tell you where they went. Hey, 
<laughs> you didn't hear hey. anything from me. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Dude, go the gal plan is like, mwah, mwah, delish. Also, this ending. <laughs> this ending's hilarious. Mwah. Oh, they do the smooch. Top shelf. It's a sad sight, Sparks. Another noble warrior falls victim to the plague of love. Just look away. Well, I guess we'll have to find the rest of the eggs by ourselves. Come on, Spyro. Take a little break. Let's watch the show. The Grimsby goat legs. <laughs> So, uh, yes, the <laughs> a happy ending for some, Spyro is left out. Uh, there we go, our, our old-fashioned credits. They, they never changed the credits, and I appreciate it. Uh, maybe that could be a project to play through me again, because uh, my Wii, which is now at my sister's Wii, because I gifted it to her when I go with you, but so I'm gifted the console, and then I'm the controller, so if I need that, I'm going to go other place. I visit her every two weekends. That'd be good, that'd be good. Um, yeah, I haven't played the Switch version. I know the visuals are a little bit different on the Switch version, but I don't think there's any significant changes from what I believe. Even if they call it Definitive Edition, I don't know if there's actually anything different or added. Uh, slowly playing through the original Xenoblade would be great. And the Wii version looks good. The only thing is uh, you're dealing with the composite output of the Wii, unless you've got the component cables. They did release it for the Switch, yes. It, everything is... Oh, camera clipped the wall, never mind. Pretty much, almost every game I can think of is on the Switch. There's so many games, I was just like, wow, it's on the Switch? What? It's like crazy. Same place. <laughs> the new Pikmin. Sony games! Sony games! Wow, Mark Sony works for Sony games. Wow. Still go playing, my man! Didn't even do all the music. But yeah, no, this game is actually great. This game is is very very good. So if uh, <laughs> Warner Brothers, oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, if anyone you know, if you want to play this game, uh, I assume if you have a PlayStation, you might be able to get the PS1 versions. And if you can't, then uh, well, the remaster is always available on PC and every console. PC, Switch, it's on the Switch. Uh, Nintendo gave people hope that they were finally- Yes! Nintendo, please! Where's my Mario Galaxy 2? And Mario Galaxy 1 is on the, um, is on the, uh, the NVIDIA Shield. I- I will never forgive them. Oh yeah, yeah, Nintendo are one of the few companies where their old games hold up fairly well. And they don't have to, like, make them obsolete all the time. People will go back and play Zelda Ocarina of Time no matter where it is. Like, there's all this stuff. And yet, for some odd reason, Nintendo does not, uh... You can't even buy these old games. You gotta buy them on a subscription service. So I'm just like, why? Oh, man. We gotta do that. And to be honest, I think Sony's in a similar boat. I think there's a lot of games on the PS1 and PS2 that, like they realize and people would gladly pay money for it and they're like, yep, yep, there you go. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it applies to everything because Sony does it. Sony does it better in some ways um, and worse in some other ways. And I'll never be able to play old Gran Turismo's because that's uh, that's under a different kind of licensing but it's still another problem. Meanwhile, Goldeneye can get relicensed, so I don't know. Granted, I, I, car games, like, all car brands are so, like, hostile to doing stuff in video games now. It's, it's insane. Oh yeah, they got multiplayer, there's so much, like, I, the homebrew scene, modding scenes, is, like, something that, like, game companies should really, like, embrace. And just go, like, these people make really, really cool stuff. You know, they got cool ideas. Is it applicable to everything? I don't know, you know, you could be the judge. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, didn't that happen this week? Uh, Nintendo sent a cease and desist to the Yuzu developers for the Switch emulator, and it's like, oh boy, here we go again. Spec Ops Online is no longer available, or won't be- no, it is no longer available, I'm pretty sure. You can't buy it. I think there is some music in it, 
but it's like th this is this will be a game that you know without people talking about it and without a way to play it really it will be lost to time people will definitely forget about it wish i get the lord of the rings license back what do you mean we got great lord of the rings games like uh lord of the rings golem One day I will play Battle for Middle-earth 1 and 2. They were on the PS3, weren't they? Do I have them on Steam? Or, uh... We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pitch it when a retro achievement set is out. Or it's already out and I just need to get around to it. These credits sort of keep going on for a bit, don't they? A lot of people were involved with this one, I guess. Not on Steam, they're not on any platform except disc. Ah, what a shame. What a shame. Well, I mean, the nice thing about the, uh, the world of the internet is, uh, where there's effort, there is a way, so... I hope you have enjoyed the Spyro Trilogy! We have had four great fun, sleepless years creating it. Find us at www.insomniacgames.com. Does that URL still work? It probably does. Uh, it does. But they do redirect to insomniac.games. But it still works. Insomniac is a still, still alive, uh, you know, game company. Don't know how many people are the same. That's always a, a thing as well. Just, just know, just because the name of the company is the same doesn't mean the people are uh, at, at all the same. Just before you kicked the sorceress's big, fat, ugly butt, she built a factory to make robotic wow. parts to fight sparks. Wow, you're butt shaming. But I don't think they're any match for him. Okay. Into the bug butt factory. So we have our sparks level. Uh, a new true setless game coming out. Ooh. Still called different. Yeah, it's, it's like Story of Seasons. You know, it's, it's just like, yeah, you know, it's got the same creative talent. Someone, actually, it's the same development studio as well. But it's like, yep, publisher change, naming's gone. So, so we don't have egg thieves, so we've got uh, key thieves. Pioneers of Pagodia. Oops. Come on, come on. Uh, uh, oh my gosh. Come on. So I mentioned F1 earlier, the F1 race uh, this week was not very fun. It sort of, sort of went like, you know, Max and Stappen runs away with it, and then, uh, the rest of the pecking order basically follows suit. The Ferraris looked pretty alright, the Mercedes looked a little worse than that, the McLaren's definitely can't catch up, and, uh, and the Aston Martins were just kind of behind, and then it was wh whatever was going on behind, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully next week isn't like that, but uh, if it is, I think people are going to be very, very tired of F1 very soon. And that's not fun for them. Uh, my Saddle game is a big disappointment for people are hoping, and it seems the hopes are being fulfilled. Also, would like to mention that Settlers games were especially popular in Germany. I always love that, like, when different games are popular in different regions. Gosh, Beatles. I mean, this is the last of the four Sparks levels as well, so it's going to be a bit more intense. But I, I always love that, and, and especially as well, like, I, as someone who's not from Europe, I feel like if you're not from Europe, you got really no idea how, like, different European, um, every single big name in RTS focus, uh, German name journalism, I've set this as a kid. I have, I've played a couple of games of Settlers, but I haven't played like a ton of it. I do have Camel Up on a, as a board game though. Oh. I, don't, I don't think that's popular in Germany, is it? It's very recent. It's called Die Settler. I really love the, uh, like I know there's like very, very fancy versions of the board game as well, where it's like, all the pieces are like very nice and 3D. It's kind of expensive. But the way that is, the settler is just the international version. That'll just place of translation. The settlers. Oops, something like that. Also, yeah, you can tell that my gems are going to cap out at 7,000. And yes, that does mean 
you can extrapolate 8,000 gems towards money bags. 8,000 whole gems. Insane amount of money, but then again, it's like, oh, you gotta get it somehow. They gotta, they gotta encourage you to get it somehow. So you need 8,000 gems and 100, or and 100 of the 149 eggs because uh, number 150 is locked behind the bonus. Level. There we go. Ladybird. I did. I did. I'm. I'm sort of on the, the lower end of health right now, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Will I die? Uh, maybe. Might happen. This the spawner. He was just here a second ago. There he is. Oh my gosh, he's following me. Uh, oh, we got an alternate pathway up there. Hey, I was thinking it's like, eh, it's probably a dead end somewhere. Yeah, I, I actually, as well, I hope that you as a viewer uh, do go out and play these games because for me, as someone who had played some of them as a kid, I think that it's a very curious opportunity for me to go back and like, or to, to witness this third game in sort of a more modern light. Oh my gosh, I'm going to absolutely cop it at that point. Sort of in a more modern light, but definitely in one where I completely get it. And uh, typical gaming, dang, I went right the first way, now I have to go back. Yeah, that's always a thing. I mean, fortunately, there is no wrong way, really, in, in any of this, any of these levels, that is. You can't go too far off. That's the best level design when, you know, no matter what the player does, they're not punished so severely. They miss out on something permanently. Foot boss time! We've got, um, this guy. Oh, I can do this. <laughs> can we get him before he comes back? Oh. Come on, come on. Gotta get his bald belly out. Oh. Okay, we got that one. Let's see if we can get the other one. Oh. That's the hard part about making room. Oh, hold on. It's on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old games definitely lack the... the <sighs> they definitely do lack the, the QOL. Um, not all of them. I, I, I won't say universally, but more times than not, yes. And there's also lots of ones where it's like, you know, things like, hey, having increased resolution and other kinds of things that make PC versions great. You know, that's always good. But I also do agree that it's like, yeah, there's things like waiting for your memory card and, and online being a bit like, you know, a bit of extra work. It's always, uh, fun. There's a lot of, like, fun memories around, like, those times. I don't know if I'd exactly go back to the dial-up days. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not... Alright, come on, he's got like, not much left of his health, but he is kind of mostly there. Not... We're good, we're good, we're good. Audience of death pits. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not the biggest fan of arcades, like, mooching me for my money, but I get it. I get why they did it. Uh, the idea of NES hard as well, and things basically designed to just, like, sell, you know, like, strategy guides or helplines. Helplines were so popular and lucrative back in the days. It's the only reason why they ran them, is because they could just make the games milk the money, basically, like the arcade games did. Kind of doing these like S gang signs right here. But when they got rid of the infinite respawns, provided you uh, had money and you kept the instant death mechanics, those suddenly were unfun. Uh, if you only had a couple. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, arcade games also spawn from like kind of the sideshow, you know, approach of just like step right up, step right up, and like some people will win, but you know, you're obviously there to make a profit, and people were sort of aware that that was the case. Unless I only have pizzas. Yeah, I. <laughs> Instant death I could do without, or like, you know, learning curve, like, oh, you'll you'll realize next time, it's like, bruh, I could do without that. There are a lot of games that, like, do give you the tools to understand what you're doing, like, so easily. Uh, that genre is called roguelike for a reason. Uh, where's that 20 gems that I'm, like, missing? Man, I must have dropped it, like, ages ago. We were good at that game, so thanks to that, we know that people can do that and can like it. Maybe it was over on the right here, or something. Ah! Where did these fellas come from? Remember, uh, playing Don't Starve when I was new? I was still a young adult, so I was very bad at games. There we go, 7,000 gems, 200 out of 200. The level is complete. All the levels in the game are complete. Cough, cough. Well, let's be able to sort of this to, to just trying. I saw how you could finish the game. Just how much stuff you had to do. So I never tried a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I sometimes feel that way about some games where I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort. Fighting games are like that for me. I just, I'm not good at them. That last egg must have had some extra magic because it gave Sparks two new abilities. Now he can break Two. open treasure chests, and using the atlas, he can warp you to any level. Just select the level you want, and press the square button. The warp is nice. The opening treasure chest is pointless at this point in the game. <laughs> like, like, do I really need that? You have to, like, you have to beat the final boss in order to do this. Which means you have to have gone into every level. Now, Moneybags is just chilling here. Don't I have Moneybags. Spyro, I won't be needing any more of your money. Now, now, don't look so surprised. I found one of the dragon eggs, and I'm going to sell it for a fortune back in Avalar. Uh, uh-oh. Uh, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, I've got to be going now. Uh, toodles. And there he goes. If you chase him, every time you hit him, he will drop a ton of money. <laughs> and it's such an entertaining feeling to just be like, mmm. Mm. Yummy gems. Yummy gems. Cost me 8 euro. Ugh. What's the neat game though? It's, it's not a game I'll play more than an hour, two, three hours. But it is neat. I do like neat games on two to three. Or well, that, that, you know, the low entry fee. Like, that's less than a lunch. Don't fall off the edge, you gotta keep beating up money bags. You're gonna miss this opportunity, man. I love how like brutal you gotta keep going as well. Just to just to put in your mind, he stole this much money from you. Drat. Double drat. Drat 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 drat. I never knew dragons were so fast. That's it, I give up. I'm retiring to Spooky Swamp to become a haiku poet. We call it not stalling for time in German. What is it stalling for? Oh my gosh, it was AI all along. I know it's Al. I know it's Al. But I can call him Betty. And then he just runs away into the freaking Crystal Islands. So with that, we have all of our wonderful 15,000 gems back. This was done in a cutscene in Spyro 2, and it's done through wonderful gameplay in this one. With that, and all 149 dragon eggs collected, we now have access to the mystical, we call it Zetschneiden. It's out this time. Time waiting. The super bonus round. That's right. We gotta have a fun little bonus level. Now, this level is still involved. There's still a little bit of stuff in this. This feels like a whole level, somewhat. And how many gems are in this level? That's right. 5,000. And a secret egg. <laughs> so we gotta get 5,000 whole gems, which seems like a ton, and it is. 
Hi there. Hey, you finally made it, Spyro. Hunter was a little uh, worried didn't take about that long. when you went off to fight the sorceress, but I always knew you'd beat her. Like flogging or flaying or maltreatment to translate. Oh, keeping this someone worked. This place is oh. where the sorceress kept all her treasure. But after she was defeated, a bunch of thieves came and stole it. I kind of get that. I get that. Because it's just like you're more than welcome to keep the, the time treasure. that feels like forever. I don't know, something like that. Maybe that's the, the connection they're going with. There's a lot of words in German that it's like you translate it in English and it's just like a very literal definition of like something. So, yeah, so this, uh, when you're bored and don't know what to do, we call it killing time. Yeah, exactly. Except instead of killing the time itself, it's like the time of killing. I guess playing wasn't necessarily killing. Uh, so the uh, egg thieves don't have eggs, they're just kind of holding their hands out. Like they ain't got nothing to do. Oh, he jumped it. He jumped it. I got him. They have a lot of money on them. So much so that if you count... It was what? 145? 150? That was a bit. Gems go everywhere. You need so many gems in order to proceed into each of these rooms as well, by the way, so... I believe we have three challenges, sort of just like a regular old level as well. This is a 17,000, the other one was a 16,000. I'm about to jump into the Kool-Aid. Totten, which comes from Todd, aka Death and Tot. Um, oh, what's a... I, hi there, hi there, how are you doing? Um, okay, Dead, just noticed a German noun has a D. Was it Todden? I think it's Todd. It's like a D sound more than a double T. Killing time one. It's not the deading verb. What's something? I, there's something I've, I've experienced, and it's like I, I saw the word Todd in it. Oh well. I'll remember eventually. Come on! Come on, egg thief! Or thief? Thief? Gem thief? Is the Toshlagen hit dead? Hey, Bianca, you're not helping, Bianca. Thanks, Bianca. You'll be pleased to know Bianca appears as a character in Enter the Dragonfly because people who developed Enter the Dragonfly saw just this game and thought, therefore, that's exactly the formula. The difference is a bit nuanced. Podden is generally used. Dude, there's a lot of these thieves. 18500. Okay, so now we got our three doors in mind. Just keep throwing more, throw more gems. We've got 25 is all around as well. That's what I love. It's just like, oh, you know, collect all the gems. And it's not just 5,000 gems lying about. You gotta, you gotta put in some effort for some of these. So as we go around, we'll probably hit this guy. Yeah, here we go. And that's enough gems to open up uh, this one door down here. So let's have a go at it. Totschlagen is, oh, Totsch, sorry, not Schlagen, Totschalgen. Is exclusively used for humans. Okay. Hi there, Hunterino. Hi, Spyro. Did you see Bianca? She was really worried about you when you went off to fight the sorceress. It was pretty hmm. funny. She tries to play it cool, but she was scared stiff until you came back safe. Hmm. I just finished fixing up an old submarine. Why don't you try taking it for a spin? <laughs> oh. Totung is totung is when you killed someone in an accident in the law. Great! Hop aboard! I don't think we have a one word for that. So we, we just say like accidental manslaughter or something like that. Submarine! That's right, you go around and we're doing this mechanic again. Uh, are there any gems? I don't think there are any gems. I think it is just the, the, the bits. Hey, it's fun. They all drop their own gems, so... If you're wondering, where are you going to get the more gems? That's why. When you killed someone and it was not murder, murder in German law requires not just malicious intent, but other planned. Um, yeah, we've got a, we've got a, what's the term? Uh, uh, premonition, is that the term? There's a specific term we use. So it's like, sometimes people like, you know, they wanted to kill someone, but they actually had no intention of doing it at that moment. And usually sentences are like, so much lower for that. Premed Premeditate, that's what it is, yes. Yes. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of curious that the lore works that way, but it's like, ah, I kind of get it, I guess. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm also not one to overthink things. I don't know. Uh, English law is manslaughter and first degree. Yeah, yeah, there's first degree and, and, and the different degrees. I think there's a specific term for, like, when it is actually accidental. First and second degree are, like, your actions were dangerous. Uh, just to certain amounts and how much your actual intentions were, or how much your actions really were, like, you know, that is gonna get someone killed. You don't just kill time. Time to kill. Going nowhere. There we go. Show those dudes who's boss. You wanna take my sub for a spin? No. Sure. Come back when you want to ride it. That's always fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always fun that like different languages have like these kinds of phrases like that. I remember um I think someone like knew Russian like in the earlier streams. Also Hunter's in Check here. He just out. got in here right this away and threw on some pants. Turbo snowboard course. Take this with a grain of salt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sasquatch 6. A gang of the Sasquatch on 6. Snow discs. I bet that you could outrace the lot of them. If you win, we get a huge pile of treasure. If you lose, I have to slick down the whole course with my tongue. So, ready to race? Now this I love. Right on. Just don't lose, or my tongue's gonna be a popsicle. Because the nuances of current day German coincide with the origin time of saying. Yeah, that's always fun as well. Like the languages change over time as well. Um, so we got this wonderfully like wide skateboard, and the whole point of what's going on here is that you'll see that there's like gems all around, which you can still use your radar. So feel free to use that because that can be painful to find. Um, your goal is mostly to hit the crabs, that will give you boost, a little bit of boost, and you can obviously still do tricks to get more boost, um, but given that there's so many gems here, the, f the famous Schmetterling, Schmetterling, ah, the butterfly, there was a fun article I saw in Hack News today about how most pictures of butterflies show them while they're dead, <laughs> it's like, a little bit, a little bit, um, uh, I guess, uh, if you, if you really like butterflies, it's a bit saddening. Um... And I sort of, I, I don't know, I do agree, but it's like... Yeah, no, I get, I, I get why it's in this position of... Everything is... Everything's dead. Also, you could do, like, a quadruple backflip there, which is insane. Or was that a quintuple backflip? I don't have a rocket in my mouth. We're gonna keep going around, we're just gonna make sure I get all the gems. It is a bit tricky to get all of them. Because like some of them are just like up ledges or down ledges, and it's just I don't know, in motion the draw distance is a bit tricky to deal with. Because you just see me like sail past so many of them because it's just like oh I didn't see that up there. A bit too much going on, I guess. Um so Schmetterling is someone who flaps. Oh! Flapper. But the verb has fallen basically completely out of use. Oh yeah, you see that one green gem just right there? It's like, eh. I think if I take the... Well, low road air quotes. I'm pretty sure it was like the... How much was the low road? I think I have to lean right because I know I dodged... Yeah, that one. I can still see spikes like pointing over in that direction for a few things. So much uh, that most of almost all Germans won't even know what about it anymore if not for the butterfly and therefore wrongfully assume it comes from the I still very much used Schmetten. You better not lose again! <laughs> Okay, good luck this time. Nice. Um, it was like a I mentioned on um 
Uh, that's extreme. It's like the word helicopter comes from the, uh, the Greek word helico and pter, which means, uh, rotary wing. And it's like, it's like the amount of people who think it's like from the word helio. It's like, no, 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 no. That's, that's the word for sun. All Greek. All Greek. Uh, Schmetern sh and Schmetter are very different. Schmetern is either singing really loud with your full effort and putting your heart into it. And it's still gems. Oh, I can't be messing all the gems now, can I? And yes, you can retrive, so. <laughs> At least there's that. But yeah, I'd spend like so much time in the bonus round in this section because it's just like, I don't know where the gems are. Fox, what are you pointing at? What is he pointing at? He's not pointing at all the gems, I can tell you that. There's one down there. Oh, never mind. Let's point at something. From Zerschmeden. And that would leave people slightly confused. Uh, oh, Sch Schmeden is to crush. Where are you, Sparks? Is he pointing behind me? Because I just missed something behind me? Yeah. Okay. I should see if I can, like, do, like, a loop, like a circle. But I think the game, like, respawns you if you're trying to go backwards. And yeah, even though it's a figure eight, no shortcuts. Actually, is it down? It might just be down. Oh, so am I right? Okay, it would be it would be at the end of something there. I love the uh, the ripto on the bottom of the of the snowboard. All right, where is he pointing? Where is he pointing? Where is he pointing? He's pointing to my right, but where on my right? Oh, there it is. Now are we done? I think we're done. I think we're done. Spox isn't looking at anything. Okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, I think that Schmerden is used for singing comes from the feeling of impact, physical and metaphorical, when people really put their all into singing loud. I wonder if there's like something like um, like where that word comes from, uh, like what was the original intention? Sometimes it is just like that's the word, that's the, the sound someone just associated with it ages ago, and they're just stuck with it. Sometimes it's a very visceral or a guttural sound. Now the one thing with this is that even though you can do some insane like flips all the time, uh, you're gonna actually be slower than your competition if you uh, constantly do that. What you want to do is you want to keep doing boosts like this and not falling off like I'm doing because that doesn't help you progress at all because you see that I'm going so far behind. But maybe I can catch up. But it's like you want to keep doing your boosts so you can catch up and I assume you don't need to shoot anything unless you're shooting at first because same rules as the other races. Language branches off so quickly. Oh yeah, it does. And yes, you can corner cut a little bit as well. And you can murder. Just bonus points. FYI. They did not say murder was banned. One, two, three. Let's get some boost. Right, come on, come on, come on. There's two guys. Where's first place? Wait, oh. Nope. That, that's him ages away. Man! I was very off on this one. Come on, get him! Get him! That was the crab. That You aimed for the crab. Good job, Spyro. Good job. We'll give it another go. We'll give it another go. I think that I get it. I get it. Alright. One, two, three. Okay, we're doing three jumps. Three flips. One, two, three, four, five? That's five. We do have to overtake six of them, so I guess there's more effort than some of the other races. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So I got to take my finger off the boost button. Never stop boosting. Alright, well that's second and third right there, so I guess I'm doing a lot better than I did before. Oh, there's first. Easy. Easy. Should be able to get him now. Oh, nope, not with that effort. I think one thing about the gaming industry is that the big budgets for games could still be feasible. Depends how big, because I just think like hundreds of millions is like starting to get to a silly point. And he's dead, he's been more eager. Say I was killing time. I would never win a court case, would I? <laughs> Just great graphics are expensive. Yeah, like, I mean, like most of the cost is graphics and scale. And honestly, I would be perfectly fine with like just paying like half as much for games that come out more often that have like ideas that are like just fun for that short bit of time. Whoa, whoa. I know this guy's gonna catch up to me if I'm not doing my boost. There you go, there you go. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. We're good. We're golden. We're good. If you do lots of mini games like uh, yes. old games did. You schooled them like a bunch of frost bitten, flat footed, molasses eating, lead pants wearing, cross eyed glacier trolls riding slabs of plywood with sandpaper on the bottom. And we want some shiny stuff too. <laughs> Ooh. Not Meg, it's just money! <laughs> Look at all that money! Keeps going. Spyro is a wonderful example of just nonsensical levels that are just plain fun. Yeah, exactly. Spyro, like, like, are we really gonna explain, like, how in this fantasy world of dragons is just casually, you know, we're doing snowboarding? No. If you just, if you commit to it, people will really accept it. There's lots of games that are like that. Um. Alright, this door is open, and uh, what do we have? A wonderful superfly. Not even just a superfly, but the, uh, the flame superfly, the combination power up. Because realism wasn't really possible, uh, people didn't expect it. Yeah, there's a certain level of jankiness. Um, there's, a, there's a fun picture I, I, I'm seeing. I don't know if uh, you can find it just by the text, but it's, it says the PlayStation can produce, like, like realistic effects or something like that and it's just like a picture of a rat <laughs> like like a very polygonal rat oh no no it's not a rat it was it was like a like a thing uh like parachute i don't, i forgot what it was it's like it's a hilarious picture well i mean you can't have some of this stuff in a god of war game but i feel like lots of i don't know like maybe all the god of wars you could have I mean, we got lots of games as well where, you know, don't take it too seriously. Find... I have the perfect number of flying saucers. God of War is one of these series I would give uh, as an example of successful big budget games. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm of the opinion that presentation is really what sells video games these days. Not specifically the voice acting, but because of how gosh darn heckin' easy it is to play. I love that you have a timer as well. In case, like, you, you, you know, if you're worried about your thing running out. Uh, which, uh, where's he gone? Where's he gone? I swear he was flying around. Oh, oh, oh. I saw him. I saw him. Where's he gone? Oh, I caught him. Where? Where? Where or where? Ultra Kill does not have to play. Yo, so happy to discover your stream, especially since Fire Game. Thank you, Zenzi. Thank you very much, Zenzi. Or Zanzi, sorry. The four is an A. Uh, I'm hearing him. There he is. There he is. We're on the hunt. We're on the hunt. Whoops. Elden Ring has presentation. Yes, yes. Um, Ultra Kill does not have just amazing gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got my name right there. There you go. Zanzi stream. We almost played Elden Ring at all. If I remember the writer in front of the tutorial level, most likely everyone will. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've not played Elden Ring. I've, I've only played Dark Souls 1, and it's like, from my Dark Souls 1 experience, it's like, yeah, you know, there's some things I didn't like about Dark Souls 1. Five thousand dollary dues. There we go. Um, 
but definitely there were some bits where I'm like, yeah, you know, this this is great. I love the the, the opening areas, not, not even just the tutorial, but that whole like part there. Uh, get all 2,000 or 20,000 gems, walk through the door. We got a rematch boss fight. I don't know how she did it, Spyro, but the sorceress must have survived that last battle. She's been waiting here all this time, the lava wasn't saving hot enough. up her magic to destroy you. Big video game intro. Are we talking like full motion video intros Your or just? Your chance to defeat her is to borrow my flying saucer. I've cast some You're spells on flying it to saucer. You just casually have one. Limited flying time, but the rest is going to be up to you. You've come it this far. It flies for a limited amount of time as long as nothing her. happens to it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your Bob, it, it was all downhill after Bobby Yeti. Bobby Yeti was where it's at. So uh, yeah, try to chase her and don't hit the things that she spits back at you. Like, you can t yeah, you can tell. A rematch boss fight is something that no other Spyro game has technically done. Because all these bonus levels haven't really had boss fights in them. Uh, does it play like any of the rest of the game? No. <laughs> no, does flying on a flying saucer like the rest of the game? No. You know what Spyro is? A game about flying and picking up stuff. And that sort of is what every single power-up is, inevitably. It's so fundamental, but it works. One day I'll play Donkey Kong 64 and then I'll just throw out that reasoning, but... Oh, oh, oh! Can I, can I do a predict shot? No, one more, get out of, oh. Alright, we got like one hit, one hit on one hit. I did it, technically. <laughs> the Rome Total War intro was also the E3 trailer. Full gameplay, showed the most massive battles in the video game history at that point. It just works. Also, Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming out. Speaking of Dragon's Dogma 2, look at it! Two dragons. Two dragons. Very nice. Uh, very rough, rough edges. And there we go. That's the, the true ending, the secret ending of the game. And we witness a wonderful final cutscene. Because we literally just watched 150 or 151 dragons born. <laughs> I guess Spyro is not the littlest dragon anymore. Oh my gosh. Leave him with you. Oh my gosh. That's it. That's your true ending. That's your true ending. I hope you appreciated it. Time for another round of credits. <laughs> uh, so, wondering, am I the only one finding the Lucy Physics of Spyro weren't connectly done, uh, correctly done in the remake version, the timing of how? I definitely note the camera is a bit too close in the remake. Um, I'd say the physics are close but yeah i mean it is a re-implementation and there's always going to be just quirks uh mostly because i guess i assume a lot of this game works off integer logic um what fps does the spyro on the original uh spyro on the original runs at 30. it's fairly solid i don't think it really dips but you could probably find spots where it does dip um and someone's going to say oh it's not 30 it's actually 27 like i just find like it's just a weirdly lower frame rate um camera angle and zoom definitely alter the experience and i would say that is the part that's drastically different um also as well everything is reanimated so there's a degree of like you know does it follow the original animation quite as right um because that's that's another thing as well is like when spyro jumps a little differently uh, if you ever play spyro a hero's tale and i know it's not the same game but like his jump in that game he does like this like head duck and there's this weird delay feeling i feel with the jump even though the game runs at 60 FPS and it's very solid. It's like, eh, you can, you know, there's something about his jump where it's like, I'm seeing him try to push up, when really I just want him to jump and I just want him to just float up. <laughs> I just want him to just go up. This is all the same credits, ain't it? Hey, it's worth sitting through twice. There we go. Warner Brothers Gollum, responsible for Lord of the Rings Gollum. I don't know if he was. If you were, that would be amazing casting. Um, but yeah, no, I've definitely enjoyed this game. So, at the moral of the story at the end of the game, like most of the games I play, you know, recommend. Give it a go. Find it, find it somewhere. Give it a go. I remember playing Dark Souls 1 on 60 FPS until I found out the reason I couldn't make some of the jumps was because it shortened roll and jump distance. That's, that's the one bit that, like, irked me about 
that uh, that that fix is that it's like well it's not really a fix because it is altering some well it's not altering some game logic but rather game logic is dependent on that frame rate that just hasn't been unsynchronized or desynchronized um after looking at some more game dev it's like i get it i get why games did that especially when you have a fixed target but also when you have um you know there's gonna be limits there's just like there's points where like your end your code is just gonna be kind of weird if you're constantly handling all these increments all these little tiny bits of things all right the neat game i got yesterday craftomation 101 oh that's an interesting one yeah uh yeah I, I don't know if i'd say the fps is exactly to blame um because if you run the game at 30 it's still gonna feel different um but you have the ability to play it at a faster frame rate, and certainly any difference is going to make you feel like it is different. A relaxed small scale automation game. Target audience is probably kids. No belts, as in no oh ro robots that you can program. Ah, oh, okay, it's, it's a it's a robot programming game. You tell them to do subroutines and jazz like that, or is it just they do like you point A to B and they'll do it, and then it's like how how do you pick up and drop it? Okay, you don't have to program all their like motion paths usually they're reserved for, for puzzle games which there is one i would like to play on stream i'm gonna try and figure out if i can like find it somewhere this year and play it as like a one-off slowly introduces functions oh as in it is a bit of program a bit of bit of that kind of stuff you start with the find and pick up resource oh and you unlock a bit Ooh, very very nice And I just go to the nearest and pick it up. Ah. Ah, very nice. Very, very nice. Can I just appreciate this aesthetic of insanely mipmap models? Like, or not mipmap, but like LOD, like reduced models. And just the way it like blends in with the higher resolution textures and the models add more detail. Um, this The Spyro franchise sort of was kind of pioneering in that regard. Like, it's not brand new but like the effect that it works at because if you notice at the end of the Spyro games or really at, you know this because this is the last one we're not going to see a Spyro PS1 game again none of them have fog they all just go the levels are as big as you can see and I think that that is such a such a fundamental part to Spyro is being able to see all the way over there and seeing a massive level that you will keep exploring even if it's not like too massive and all these levels are mostly just rings um, and you'll get later functions so you can use your create fire function uh, instead of having to pick up stone and pick up stone and combine them pick up color ah okay so you program little bits like that but yeah we're at the we're at the end of a of a of a trilogy i i think it's been a great trilogy um and this is like the fun time as well when they release games so close to each other that y you accept three games that are kind of similar they all play ba you know fairly similarly but they have some fundamental differences slowly unlock uh features that allow more complex logic that sounds pretty neat i'll give it a look i'll give that a look uh, i have not done crash bandicoot on stream but uh i would mm, yeah it'd be interesting to do i don't have as much a love for crash bandicoot and i suck at the time trials but maybe it'd be good fun. I might, I might go go through them at one point. Um, there's also the Ratchet and Clank trilogy for later on. I have never played the Jack and Daxter games, so someone's gonna grill me on that one. Um, but I got plenty more games uh, where this came from as well, um, so don't worry. Uh, and remember this other Spyro games afterwards as well. 111%. Uh, by the way, I just love that there because you get an extra egg out of nowhere. I assume it's because the sorceress gives you an eight. Oh, is it? No. No, because the sorceress has a level at the end there. Oh, it's because it's because uh, Moneybags had an egg. That's what it was. So there you go. Hit circle. Well, first of all, can we can we see the uh, the skill points? Do I have to scroll through everything? Hold on. Hold on. Let's get to the end. Uh, Ratchet and Clank. This will be fun. Um, da -da -da -da. So if I go to this. Where are the skill points in this menu? Do can you even see the skill point? I'm pretty sure they're somewhere, right? Oh well. I've done all the skill points because it's got an epilogue right there. 
So let's go to the epilogue. Nancy wins gold at last. The dreaded curse of the tailor snake comes true. The seals invent the sport of squid boarding. The game of Wacker Bentley is born. A Rhinoch prima donna entertains cloud spires. The Bailey gang finds an easy target. Zoe and Amy compete for Sparks' affections. Deputy Holiday catches the notorious Nya Nya gang. Ganassi, Ganork, and Ripto hold a summit to discuss the Spyro problem. <laughs> bah! Hunter discovers babysitting is harder than it looks. Thank you all for playing. We'll miss you. Very, very nice. Very, very nice epilogue. I'm, I'm going to leave it that screen for a, a hot moment just to wrap up. But yeah, no, 117% is also a fun completion number. I always love all these, um, all these games like, yeah, Naughty Dog is the same thing. It's like 100% is just 100 up to a point and then throw in a bit of bonus percent. Why not? Um, but that's always good fun. Uh, but yeah, no, this was this was a good fun game to play, and I hope you all have had a good fun time watching, um, and, and, you know, whatever random commentary I have, it is 9 times 13, that is true, that is true, it is 9 times 13, or I guess 3 times 30, 3 times 39, ooh, <laughs> but 13 is prime, so you can't do too much around that, um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see a bit of just whatever happened to the franchise after this game in Enter the Dragonfly, which I won't play this year, but we'll, we'll leave some time for next year. It's only March, there's still plenty of games to play, uh, and plenty of new experiences to be had. But until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, you can follow on Twitch. I stream every week on Monday at 8.30pm Australian Eastern uh, Daylight Time. We're getting close to the time zone switch, but not yet. Uh, I don't have an Easter break, so it's not going to happen suddenly. Uh, if you missed parts of this, uh, I guess the VODs on Twitch, but also the VODs will end up on YouTube, where it'll be permanently. So if you missed any stream before last week, which is all of them basically, um, they're all there, so you can watch them there. And uh, the audio is slightly better balanced, because I can hear it in post. Uh, yeah, have a good discovery your screen, clever discussions and comments, I'll be back, I'll be back. No, <laughs> I appreciate your arriving Zanzi, I hope you've had a great time. And, uh, yeah, um, yeah, other than that, I'm also on Plurama, I've mentioned, so m.bn.com, uh, where I sometimes say some things. I have a Twitter, but I don't say things on Twitter, because Twitter is a weird site. <laughs> but I do the stream a lot there, if you want to see the stream alerts. Um, but yeah, no, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and, uh, yeah. Just have have a wonderful time. Play some cool games. Tell me about your controllers. I, I mentioned that one earlier. So anyways, peace everyone. Have a good one.